Hello. Welcome back. Hello, gents. Still Batman. <laughs> Welcome back to the Mover Gonky and Sometimes Wombat show. Did Doug uh, make it? Douglas is, it's his turn in the barrel, so to speak. That's a Navy <laughs> thing, right? He's having technical difficulties, so we're on our own, gents. It's just going to be his turn in the old woodshed. He might, he <laughs> might make it work, but uh, I want to welcome everybody and thank you for joining us, especially if you're listening on Spotify and all the podcast stuff. I forgot to upload it last week, or at least I uploaded it and got stuck in draft for a couple of days. So thanks for reminding me. But welcome back and welcome Wombat, our Mustang driver. Gentlemen. Gentlemen. That's Wombat. Yes. That's author of Vengeance and or Treason Flight. By the books. And then uh, we got old Gonky, my co-host. <laughs> oh, dude, this one's not the one with the... Oh, wait. The old nope. one, dude. There he is. Oh, yeah. And there's everything. a third there's coloring a book on the way, right? Oh, dude, I'm, I'm, I'm expanding uh, Marine Corps by vocabulary by teaching them to write letters. Dude, you are a renaissance man. That's what you are. Well, welcome back. I feel like such a piece of garbage that Gonky has more books than me now. <laughs> yeah. You have more pages. so Get back to writing. Uh, so anyway, you welcome. Go write more. Yeah. You, uh, hey, speaking of, go ahead. Put your, put your award on. No, no, I'm not gonna. <laughs> you wore it. You wore it and made me say inappropriate things. It so came in today. I was proud. Go ahead of it. and wear it's it. It's a real. You see, it's gonna. That is cool, it. dude. Put that it is on. Cool. Put it on. If you're, yeah. <laughs> this is the part where you get the medal of honor and the president just walks off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Giving you the medal. Uh, <laughs> Again, I wouldn't walk user, off. Oh, no, hold on, hold on. Uh, the DOD, not. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's awesome. heavy. I mean, is it? It feels, dude, it's heavy. Like, it's legit. Is it real bronze? I don't know. Should I try to. Cubic zirconium. It. How many coloring books do I got to sell to get one of those? <laughs> that's what I want to know. I'll put it next oh. to my helmets. Is there and, a... and the next 250 copies of vengeance flight that i sell out of my house will have the sticker on it so there'll be special edition is there a red carpet event there is i'm not going to it of course not <laughs> well <laughs> we talked about this last time i did we, we did yeah that's right we i did. don't want to okay. go to that all right let's uh shift gears and be a little bit more serious it is 9 11 yep uh what is that 22 years <laughs> since 22 uh, years yeah, so we thought we would just do a quick memorial uh, in memoriam, if you will, about 9-11 because it's kind of a big day for a lot of reasons. Uh, it changed, I mean, it changed U.S. history, world history for a while. I mean, it, the, the impacts were more far-reaching than just the one day. I mean, think of all the stuff that came out of that. Um, it's tough, and then we lost, obviously, the loss of life on the day of is just, you know, I mean, it changed us. I mean, I, I think we lost a little bit of our country's innocence, you know, I mean, oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's like JFK gets shot. That's a big day. This is another one, at least in this Pearl Harbor. I mean, if you go yeah. back, it's, I mean, it, it's, it's one of those days in history and I don't know. Wombat, what do you think, man? I mean, it's, you know, growing up and I'm sure it's the same. The, uh, my dad or mom and dad would tell me about, you know, oh, I remember when the moon, land. I remember when this, I remember when JFK and I'm like, you're just old, like whatever, <laughs> like just get a hobby. <laughs> and then, I mean, I woke up this morning and I, I felt it, man. Like I remember I was at my apartment with my girlfriend and I got a call from the ROTC unit. I was the company commander. And the lieutenant who is in charge is like, hey, there's something going on. Stand by. Um, you know, and this is AM, right? So we wore uniforms full time. This wasn't like the part time ROTC. Like we were, we were always in our uniforms. And he goes, turn on the news. And my girlfriend turned on the news and just in time to see the second plane. I mean, you know, drop the remote. And the lieutenant was like, you need to call everybody in the ROTC unit and tell them to take their uniforms off. And I remember like, I was like, what do you mean take them off? And he's like, we don't know what this is. We don't want targets, blah, 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 blah. Everybody takes it off. And it sounds so hokey now, 22 years later, 
but like I hung up the phone and I got the list of people I had to call and I looked at her and I was like, this is the last day I'm ever taking my uniform off for this wow. period. Like I was wow. set that day. Like I'm wow. all in, I don't care what it is. And, but I had to call every member of that ROTS unit and be like, sorry, don't wear it. And we didn't, it was, I mean, walking around, I mean, A&M, man, that's a huge campus with all the uh, people that know, know, you know, the, the core and all that. It, it, there's so much military and then just to see it, you'd walk around. It was the weirdest feeling. So, um, yeah, it's, so now I feel like the old guy, but, um, that was crazy, man. It, it really did. It changed everyone, I think in that day. So, yeah, there are adults now that more, I have no memory of this. That's I mean, that's what trips me out is that that's they're, wild. you know, 22 and I year beg, old kids. I beg every one of them to learn, like research oh, sure. it, talk to people. Um, don't be like I was to my parents, you know, being like, whatever, grandpa. Like, I mean, don't, it's, it's real because there's lessons to be learned. Um, you know, it, it just, if we don't learn from our past, we're doomed. I mean, that's just unfortunately the reality of it so gawky yeah <clears throat> i uh man i was flying twin cessnas in hondo texas and i had uh, i'd already been rejected like three times by the military so i didn't think military flying was in it for me <clears throat> and i had a i had an app in at american eagle i remember and like they contacted me for an interview and then i was like i got home and uh my my buddy was like hey dude a, a plane just flew into the world trade center and i my first thought was that flight instructor is screwed <laughs> like yeah I was you assumed like, it was like a cessna yeah. yeah i'm like dude it's some cessna you got lost and then he's like no 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 dude it's like a it's like a big plane i'm like well, he's like like a united jet and then like kind of like you on that i got home i turned the tv on just in time to see number two going in and that you know, it's, I mean, you talked about it. it's like one of those events where like, like, at least for me, probably America, for sure, like, it's a pivotal point, like the world's never the same. And uh, I know for me, it, um, you know, I, I wasn't in any kind of ROTC or anything, but I, I joke with people sometimes when I say I think line 11 happened, they lowered the standard and let me in. But it wouldn't surprise me if that was true. Because I mean, Wombat, we went to flight school together and like we're going to talk about it later with uh, with Mover here about a backlog in flight training. But there was no backlog for us, man. It was wide open. I mean, I went from uh, I was an ensign flying the Hornet. I don't think that happens now, you know, no, um, no way. you know, I was an ensign. Dude, I was. Yeah, I was in my fleet squadron for over a year as a JG. So like, yeah, you know, it was. Um, it's a very sad time because almost 3000 people lost their lives. And what you said about, uh, adults not knowing it today, like young adults, I mean, you know, YouTube is pretty amazing. I don't even, you know, I don't even how I got on these videos, but I mean, you can actually watch, you can watch on YouTube, you know, people dying. Um, if you, if you want a dose of, of reality, what happened that day and it's pretty chilling, man. Cause they were just normal people you know, going to work and, and, you know, I mean, it's, 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 it's crazy, but, um, yeah, man, I mean, I'll never forget it. I, like you said, you wait, I just woke up and I just felt like, I just felt it. It's so strange. Today it was different. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, and I, my parents talk about, it. I mean, I grew up in New Jersey right across the Bay, you know, yeah. the skyline changed. Um, it burned forever. I remember my dad talking about that, you know, at work, yeah. Well, and he, he lost did. customers. I mean, it was. Well, they, they stopped. Like, I was flying, right? I was flying a twin Cessna and, like, they stopped flying for, I forget, like a week. His only yeah, military allowed crazy. to fly, right? So, I mean, I remember I had a, there was a guy at the field. He wanted to give me a ride in his steerman, but we couldn't because no one was allowed to take off. So we Nobody, did, yeah. you know, a bunch of high speed taxis, but it was such a weird. So yeah, I remember hearing time. stories. I've talked to guys, you know, at the current job that were that were airline pilots during that time, and they're like, "Yeah, we, you landed wherever you were told to land, and that was your layover for a week. Like, yeah. you're yeah. staying in a hotel, you have no idea what's going on." Yeah, um, I can't can imagine. You imagine? Can you imagine being up there, like pretty much like centers, like telling every single airplane? No, they were getting a cars message saying they? lock down the yeah. cockpit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, have you seen those? They're like, they're, they're floating yeah. around where they said, lock down the cockpit. 
there's a uh, imminent threat to every airliner. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, can you yeah, they didn't know. I mean, the information dissemination. I mean, think about that. This is yeah. 2001, dude. I mean, you know, I'm not even going to use this opportunity to make a cheap internet joke on you, but this is 2001. Like, it's not what it is today, right? There's not Twitter and TikTok and all these things. There's like, everybody knows what's happening. It's, yeah. it's a whole different animal, you know? So, but we still watched it in real time. Yeah. You know, that was, a, I, I watched it in real time. You know, I, I yeah. was a freshman in, in college, so I don't have any cool stories, you know, like you guys where I was flying or doing anything. I was just, I got up and, you know, Hey, check out the news and you wa I, I remember watching the second plane not the first one but the second plane you watched it and it was like is this like a movie you know th it just did not seem real at all and then you know you go to class because i was a freshman in college and you know we're still proceeding because everybody you know is like oh and then when the reality hits and they send everybody home i mean the united states stopped mm -hmm. it stopped the world stopped and the aftermath of that was, you know, the markets crashed. I mean, we lost lives, you know, I mean, you go back and watch the footage of the people that were running to the danger, the first responders, the NYPD, the NYFD, mm -hmm. uh, the Harbor police. I mean, everybody was just going to this burning tower, not knowing that it was probably going to be the last thing they ever did the last heroic act. And even before those stories came out, it galvanized us as a country. Yeah. The patriotism was just off the chart. You know, we were, everybody was mad. You know, the Toby Keith, the, I mean, it was just a, we Gonky. were mad and we wanted yeah. to, we wanted to kick somebody's ass. Mm -hmm. And what, what came out of that though was 20 years of war and a lot of blood and a lot of treasure and a lot of regulations and rules from every possible angle freedom's given up like the the reality is more far reaching than the twin towers and the pentagon and united 93 it was what we lost as a country we can't fly the way we flew back you know 9 10 20 11, or 2001 we can't you know, our, our, what the government knows about us is far greater than what it was the day mm -hmm. prior. The amount of mental health problems from war is far greater. And we'll get to that later about, you know, the shirt you're wearing. It has, it has crippled a lot of people, a, a whole generation of people that went and fought for their yeah. country in, in the theater that no one knew about really in the mainstream prior to 9-11. So it's more than just that. And I remember, you know, 9-11 was a big day, but I remember the 10th anniversary. I sat alert mm -hmm. because they were so afraid that the 10th anniversary was going to be a thing. And okay. I remember sitting alert down at Homestead, Air Sovereignty Alert, you know, with armed up F-16s. And I remember thinking, you think back to that day. You think about Lucky Penny. You think about the pilots that took off unarmed in some cases, mm -hmm. you know, we, it was unheard of. It was unthought of to go, well, am I going to shoot down an airliner today? You know, even today, I mean, obviously it gives you pause, but it, people know, I mean, we know that that's a possibility, but back then that wasn't even, I mean, it was the hijack hijackers hijack for money or to get some political prisoner released sure. or, or yeah. whatever. It's a bomb goes off. We had no idea. We had no, we had never, I mean, they had, I mean, there's studies you could go back where they had actually looked at that stuff, but they had never really thought it was realistic. And then it happens. And we got scared as a country. And mm -hmm. I think we're still scared today. And I think the, the takeaway though, on the other side is, you know, the nine 11 has uh, the conspiracy theories that started way back then have now you've got people that have no firsthand experience that will now believe and some have validity some don't and the problem is they mix and so mm -hmm. people take it take something like 9-11 which regardless of anything underlining on its face is a horrible day mm -hmm. and then they will add whatever agenda they have to it and that's to me the problem with 
you know, the information overload that you have is that now, you know, now we can't have a realistic conversation because there's so much chaff. It pisses Correct. me off that real people died <clears throat> regardless 100%. whether it was, whether it's a hundred percent conspiracy or is a hundred percent legit. It doesn't matter to me. Like people real, died. real people died and, and continued like, to die and continued I mean, for 20 years, dude. And the most, yeah. Yeah. The most horrific part, you know, I, I, this is seared into my brain is the person jumping because they didn't want to burn. Yeah. I mean, to think about how, when those are your two options, yeah. And that's the one you pick. Yeah. Like, well, they chose to die with dignity. I mean, uh, it's horrible, but I mean, yeah. have like, you ever been to the memorial? Mm-hmm. Dude, I would, I can't, I, I don't be able to handle it. Dude, it is the eeriest, like, it's, it's like, uh, you feel it. You feel well, it. Sure. You, oh, yeah. I mean, it is, there, it is, man. that's hollow ground. That's going to be there forever. That, that's that, exactly right. It. it takes it out of you just being there. And that, that last time I went, you know, I mean, we're talking 2016 or whatever, but, and that's 15 years later and it still has the presence and the, 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 the weight of an event that, you know, changed a lot of people directly, but indirectly changed the world. Yeah. Yeah, man. A lot of people died there that day. I mean, a yeah. lot of lives were ruined. And, and somebody talked about, uh, about earlier, I've been to the world. Tra- Have you ever been to the world trade center before? Like, like before it came down. Yeah. You were there before it came down. I went in 1995 right after the, wow. the first, the first, first terror bombing. attack. Yeah. The first bombing because wow. parts were shut down, but there was never a fear. So, you know, they, they, I guess the, the bombing happened in the parking garage or whatever. They tried to bring it down then and it was unsuccessful. And then the, there was never that fear. Like that event did not cause the, the fear that, 9-11 did because of the just how huge of a tragedy it was but um yeah i remember the world, world trade center you know the fast elevator and, and stuff like that i mean being on top of it at, at the top of the tower just it's, it's incredible it's just so much different but anyway mm-hmm. what do you guys have for that um i don't want to no i just, I just uh, uh, i implore on people to keep learning you know <clears throat> things don't yeah don't get our country to a place where we have to experience that again to be united and to be a country. I mean, it's just not. I mean, that's a good point. We shouldn't need tragedy to come together. Yep. You know, I mean, we are a country, you know, I mean, it. we may disagree on issues, but at the end of the day, we are still one country. Yeah. I'm too mad when our own get killed. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, uh, before we move on to the next topic, since Douglas is, uh, <clears throat> take that off. We do have some comments and questions and super chats. This one's from Gonky's channel. I think a little bit more controversial, but I'm still going to show it. Cause I want to discuss it. Faisal. Important Thanks, to man. remember the thousands of Iraqis and Afghan civilians who died for unjustified wars and had nothing to do with nine 11. Very sad for humanity. So, Yeah. Man, I sorry. Go ahead. I was just gonna say it, it's gray area, man. You know, it, it's it's one of those things where there were strategic and tactical objectives that were achieved, but at the end of the day, we we walked away, and you know, we a lot of people died. Both sides. And I, I see what he's saying. I mean, I'll be honest. You know, I mean, I grew up in Saudi Arabia. I have Saudi friends. I've. I mean, here's the thing. I've lived all over the world and people everywhere are basically the same. They just want to have their families provide a good life. It's the freaking governments to get in the way and ruin it. Yeah. Um, but, uh, (laughs) I agree with him, man. There was, I I would say in war, uh, on both, on all sides, even the, the Ukraine, Russia thing right now, there are just people who are just trying to put food on the table and create memories with their families and they're just caught up in these terrible scenarios uh, in war. And, you know, it's, it's ruined. War, war is maybe I'm getting older, but like I just, it, yeah, you know, it's the last, it's oh. the last means of, of handling a problem. In my Dude, mind. that's a good point. Cause I remember that time frame, especially it going into 2003, I was gung ho. 
Oh, I, yeah. wanted, I wanted war and I wanted to go to war and yep. I wanted to be a part of the war. And, you know, I was ready. Let's go kick Saddam's ass. In fact, you know, my love of making flying videos came from that time frame because, you know, that's when dudes were making kick ass, you know, F-16 bombs over Baghdad, that <laughs> song. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's when it was, you know, because that gave us power. And I think that's that's what it boiled down to was we felt hopeless. We felt like we could not like we felt like victims as rightfully so. And as a nation, our response was, let's go kick somebody's ass and let's make it, you know, because that's what we are good at. You know, yeah. if we do it right. We are good at it when the gloves are off. We are not good at it when we try to, you know, protracted, long drawn out 20 years of, you know, right. we're going to make you a democracy when all you've ever known is either a dictatorship or worse. I mean, uh, you know, it's well, dude, I, I mean, I, I asked myself, I mean, after the fact, years after the fact, I, I asked myself, I'm like, well, <clears throat> you know, with regards to the towers coming down, I'm like, how many were Iraqi and Afghan, you know? <laughs> and then I was like, Hmm, you know, you start thinking after the testosterone, you know, wears off, but, you know, I was just like everybody else. Like Wombat said, America United kicks some butt. I'm steamrolling everything they point me at. Yeah. And I mean, it's shoot first, ask questions later, which is which is obviously sometimes not the right thing to do. But I mean, I understand what you know, what he's saying in this question. I agree with him 100 percent, but it's just too bad, man. I mean, in, in any any armed conflict, there's going to be uh, yeah. casualties that that are just, you know, civilians, man, kids, terrible. Well, I, I mean, that's the thing is some of these armed individuals, insurgents would surround themselves with that. I mean, oh, yeah. at some point, you know, they mm -hmm. would use human shields, you know, at some points they would, you know, use mosques or whatever, or, or religious sites. I mean, it's not, it's not just like, like I said, it's always gray area, you know, it's not just, oh, well, we bomb civilians and that, no, I think overall we did our best, but as you said, Gonky, in war, unfortunately, <clears throat> the best, you know, the best defense for stuff like that is not to go to war, is to be. Yeah, yeah if you're you already know, there, it's too late. Yeah, I mean, it's, <clears throat> it, it's, it's awful. Well, and I mean, you know, having been in <clears throat> some combat and stuff, you're, you're right, Mover, it's a, if you release ordinance, it is a big deal where it goes. Yeah. And if it's yeah. it, even if it's a hostile area and it bomb goes off target or your bullets go off target a little bit, they want to know why. And it's because the, they're constantly trying to minimize collateral damage, which it's not an excuse. But I mean, just to support your your claim, yeah. of we do care. <laughs> sure. Well, also too the ROE changes. Right. Beginning of the war, it's the Wild West. You know, it's targets of opportunity. It's there's a lot of fog of war because, you know, we're just getting out there and stuff. You know, when you're talking 10, 15 years down the road. Yeah. 100 percent. You've got an 06 that's over your shoulder going, why would you drop right here? You know, did you mm -hmm. film every single piece of information you were supposed to film? Is that a valid drop? So. Yeah. All right. Uh, Ryan says there was that story of F-16 scrambling with no weapons and they said GPS didn't exist in their jets. Uh, Probably. So the first part's true. I don't know. I mean, because those were, were Block 25s, I think, back then. I don't know when they put Iggy. Probably had uh, INS. I mean, for sure they had GPS. INS. They had INS. Yeah. I don't know if they had the embedded GPS INS back then. Probably should have because... You know, the block 40s and 42s had it. So I know maybe. in uh, late 04, when I started flying Hornets, um, it was 50 50 in Hornets. Like, yeah. Because <laughs> so. Iggy, well, because the alert jets, the guys that scramble were all were guard mostly, you know, because that's who's doing that mission. So it would have been like a block 25, block 30. I just don't remember when they got Iggy. So I'd have to look that up. But it's a good question, but even still, they're getting vectored and radar. I mean, you know, I mean, it's not like they need the GPS all that much. They could navigate, you know, back in the day without GPS, it was possible. Uh, Tim yeah, says, four thanks, biggest dude. events in my life, Kennedy in Dallas, moon landing, Berlin Wall coming down, and 9-11. 9-11 still gives me chills. Oh, yeah, weekly donation to retirement fund and Wake for Warriors. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about how to donate uh, later, but wakeforwarriors.com, right? Or is org? 
uh, uh, or I believe. Eric says, <laughs> of the 343 FDNY members, we lost six of them. It was their first day on the job. And oh, man. Changes. That's yeah. crazy. I did yeah. not know that. Thanks, Eric. Wow. I, th I think you rise to the occasion. You know, I mean, yeah, there's nothing you can say except, you know, thank you. We're yeah. grateful nation. You know, grateful community. I, th I think on that day, we were all New Yorkers. And we were all, you know, Pentagon and Flight 93. Like, I think we all were in some ways connected to every single person. Oh, yeah. Um, which sucks that it's tra tragedy. David says, love what you guys do. Keep it up. Thank you, Dave. Thanks, Dave. Janitor is back. Janitor. <laughs> hey, man. U.S. Open interrupted me watching the Mover and Gonky show live the last two weeks. Glad a Wombat is a recurring character is back on the show. Now it's football. Uh, yeah. It's football. And then Techno Faisal says, love uh, three of you guys for the honest reflection. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, man. Like I said, it's, it's always gray area. So yeah. moving on to our next topic. Uh, this one is for you, Gonky. Let me switch <laughs> gears. Well, yeah. Yeah. No, I thought I thought since Wombat was coming on, I thought we'd, we could talk about. So this is, we don't have Where's the LSO this? platform. Right. That's Come exactly. on. And you know what's funny? I tried to find out. I did a little research on, do the Chinese have LSOs? And I couldn't. You know, I what, couldn't. Wouldn't they? Would they? Would they just wing it? Like, well, why I wouldn't mean, they have LSOs? What if it's all just magic carpet and they don't That's understand true. the? Re Remember, the LSO for us came back from our history of doing this for right forever, right? I mean, if you were to start right. today, could you make an argument you don't need an LSO? It depends on. I've always said I don't need one, but that's because I'm arrogant. And that's <laughs> not what any of the LSOs <laughs> replied. No, no, uh, no, <laughs> no LSO who's waved me would agree with that statement. But um, we don't have Doug in his soft voice to read this, but I'll just summarize. I think you should just summarize it. Yeah, I'm uh, going to summarize Doug, it. It's your article. You so tell us is, about it. So obviously, carrier aviation is always intriguing to me. And the Chinese, this is their third carrier. The first one they got from the Russians. The second one they built themselves which was very similar looking to the, to the Russian one. This is their first non ski jump carrier. Mm -hmm. It's a uh, kitty hawkish in size. And basically the article says it should be ready by 2025 for sea trials. But um, this, like this is the first time I've ever really kind of dove into it. And well, I bet they've got uh, electromagnetic catapults on it. Neat. And there's only three catapults. And when I first looked at that picture, is that an angled deck? No, I don't think it is. Not right? the way that it's angled in the, you know, right. in Mars. Is I mean, that... it's hard to really say because you don't have landing area markings. A thousand feet long, dude. Is that yeah. how long a real one is? Uh, yeah. So it's about, it's about like the Kitty Hawk because it's also, uh, it's non nuke. So it, <laughs> Super. Yeah. What does it run off of? Hopes and dreams? Oh, yes. That's why it's at anchor <laughs> right the now. Tears of the <laughs> worker party. Like what? It's got gas yeah. turbines. Like yeah, it's it's like yeah. the Kitty Hawk, man. But the tears of the work. It's a it's a row carrier. They just <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's got... <laughs> it's... We need more wind need... over the deck. Well, if row you read the articles now, the wind is coming <laughs> back. Wind. They've just rediscovered the power of sailing. Yeah, so, I, I did. That is well, this cool. thing, I've seen that meme where the, I, thing I don't see, it's really, it's hard to tell in that picture, but I don't see how right it can so, be an angled deck I'm, because it's yeah. a straight side. It right. does not look angled to me, but right. good. I'm so, not a Navy <laughs> man. I'm a huge well, fan of that for them. For but, them. Want that. What if it's because they're that good? They're not. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, dude, it's, it's non-nuke. And you know this, dude. One bolter, and you wipe out your whole air force. It's like, well, it's I guess my question, I mean, mover, you could, I mean, you could even chime in. Is like, I mean, this I is a, this is this a real is my expertise. Just a, it's a, you know, this is a, basically a super carrier, right? Minus the the nuke power plant. Uh -huh. uh, very soon, in the next couple of years, so if it comes online in twenty five, comes online in twenty seven, and the airplane that they use on this thing is basically a modified Chinese flanker. They call it the flying shark or whatever but uh it's gonna be weird having that thing steaming around like 100 miles off the coast of california like i don't think you'll see it there i don't you think don't think so no i don't think you'd see that would be it. well i right I it's internet is that, that's international waters right like where we it did is, comp 2x and yeah but dude that doesn't mean anything like 
it's our international waters. I don't. Yeah, but that. that's that's their goal. Power projection. Oh, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it you is. Know? And uh, I mean, yeah, it's one carrier, um, and they've got a lot of ground to catch up. Which I I don't even see an LSO platform on this picture. Yeah, which immediately I write the whole thing off. And then, <laughs> so you can't have an LSO. Come on. So basically, what about what you're telling me is this is a one way mission style carrier kamikaze you, mission yeah you, you load them up you launch them off and that's it you're like sorry hey but hey all joking aside though i i i think the chinese have come a long way and i think sometimes oh, yeah. we, we don't give them the uh respect they deserve to be honest um, yeah i agree because i mean i you know when i first started flying the hornet we had like overwhelming advantage in our tactics and then like real quick it went to uh, if you don't execute this perfectly, you're going to take a missile in the face. Yes. You know, and that's because we, you know, we were basically, um, I don't know, arrogant to the fact that heaven forbid somebody else could have the same capabilities that we do. So we I don't know. I, over the Navy talk, as you can see by the camera. I am bored. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's really what I wanted to say. Man. I really wanted to ask you that about about is that an angled deck you see an lso platform and what do you think of that that boat what, 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 do you asked, think? what is it china is always a threat weather. dude do not weather. discount your enemies especially when they have the robust espionage program and know everything about everything yeah. right now you think so, they read slack i'm just curious dude they read slack <laughs> they read viber <laughs> they read your emails i think they watch this show that's funny Probably, Probably not. They know there's nothing of value. There's nothing. <laughs> they know. It's all our opinion they if know, you run the ticker. <laughs> I did run the ticker. You we did? ran the ticker. Yeah, yeah, I did that one. I said about the president thing. Oh, I said yeah. That's frowned upon. Let's You're see. covered. Good. Yeah. <laughs> um, Douglas is back. Doug, you back? Hey, Doug. Cool. I lied. Ah. Uh, oh, there he is. Douglas? Yeah. <laughs> he's just, he's not it, even, he's all business now. He's like, I've got to catch up. I tell you what, dude. Just I, every every week, there's somebody else other than me. <laughs> yeah, me. dude. Last time it was me. Uh, wait, I did hit. Okay, we have we are recording. So we're streaming. <laughs> oh, I had to check. <laughs> <laughs> that the was the serious part of it. Did not get recorded. Perfect. Oh, Douglas, not, oh, Douglas says uh, can do. Douglas, Doug, you have words. Say something. Com check. 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 It's working pretty well. All right, uh, Wombat, or sorry, Gonky, this is yours again. All right. So let's let us continue. Second, uh, second summary here, because um, <laughs> I can't read. Um, <clears throat> <laughs> he said in the chat, he goes, "I am not back." No, he's not back. <laughs> he's not no. Back. So the uh, well, the Navy and the Air Force are looking for their next next gen fighter, and this is just an article that uh, basically lays out that Lockheed and Boeing are vying for the next. Uh, what the hell they call it? FA. XX. XX, it says it right. How about there. now? It looks a lot like a yeah, single seat there he, is, to me, but... there he is, yeah. And it just talks about how the Navy is basically uh funneling the money from any super hornet procurement or develop development uh towards the new the new fighter. And I, I read through it and it's basically you know they talk about improved engines and the whole FA, the idea of FA, which I kind of have a problem with, and then uh then Water it being attack. Yeah, then with it, you know, the the it being stealthy. I having played I, the fighter I game five tanks right. in that picture. <laughs> right, man. And you know, like even the F thirty five, right? It's supposed to be thought stealthy. They put ordnance on it and and then it's not stealthy anymore. But I kind of think I mean there's a timeline they lay out, but I think it's all moot. I mean, I, I read stuff like this and I and I ask myself, we're still integrating F thirty five, aren't we? I don't know. I feel like we're, <laughs> yeah, uh, I feel we're like probably we're just like, skipping it. Are we skipping it? Like I feel like the <laughs> F thirty five has like, become oh. that Homer Simpson meme that just fades. Wait, it it <laughs> was in Top Gun Maverick, kinda. But do you uh, see what I'm saying? Like, just kind of fades into the bushes. Like, nothing to see here. Everybody who needed to get their money got their money, and it's fine. Oh, There's no. God, where's the banner? Where is the banner? <laughs> Especially, uh, it's really only Wombat that says these things. Uh, please, pretty much. <clears throat> He's so, making me say these things, yeah. but I mean, I'm retired. I don't care. I don't know, and uh, you know, Mover, you're going to talk about some stuff here pretty soon. It's like, where does 
you know, as far as fighter development goes, like, okay, if the shot ranges start getting ridiculous, like you just never and, take and, off. You launch from a, the ground. Right. That's what I'm you're saying. Just a high Mars now. <laughs> right. And if AI, <laughs> right. If AI starts getting a little, a little smart, I mean, I kind of start getting don't... smart. The thing is smart. Right. And it kind of dawned on me that, like, you know, probably my thinking of the perfect fighter is probably old. <laughs> you don't say. You don't say. <laughs> you're thinking of the perfect car as an 89 <clears throat> IROC. So no, you're a little bit. I <laughs> thinking of the perfect internet is from 1995. Well, dude, so, like, okay. It wasn't even so... my joke this time. <laughs> well played. That's what we call <laughs> so, the old T ball. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, Wombat, right? Even Mover. <clears throat> Sir. Even, even your hornet. show, <laughs> even me. Well, Go on. Well, flying the hornet. Start flying, with an yes. insult. Yes. No, do you fly in the hornet? Fly in the viper. Right. It's fighter yeah. attack. I mean, did you ever wish that, like, I don't know, Viper's air to air fighter? Oh, dude, I would have but, loved that we got to do air to air for the amount of time I trained air to air. <laughs> well, I, my question is like, every time I, I like we switch, we're gonna do air to air, boys. It's like. Uh, I kind of wish that I had a better airplane for that. I'm not saying sure. the Hornet's a bad airplane, but you know, like it'd be cool if I get up into the fifties pretty easily and really fast. And it'd be pretty cool Radar if I had a missile, not have a Maltese cross all the time. That would be helpful. Yeah. You know what I'm saying is the idea of FA is such a compromise and like, I don't know, like it with future warfare, like can they afford to have compromise in their designs is what I'm saying. Yeah, I don't know. This goes back as old as, you know, the generations prior to us that got us in, Gonky, where it was, you know, the A6 and the F-14 right. and the dedicated mission. And then it was like, <laughs> so, you know, you become the FA and it's like you're a jack of all trades, master of none. I mean, and that's yeah. what that's what we flew. And it it's true. I mean, those those I mean, even even look at it from a tanker standpoint. I mean, oh, it's terrible. Horrible <laughs> tanker. Like, a, I mean, even, I even a repurposed S3 that that wasn't its mission was a much better tanker. Yeah. Than, than That's what, what I, we had. So it's, whenever yeah, you try to make everybody do something, you run into that issue. Yeah. You get a whole bunch of mediocrity. And I'm not, I mean, the mm -hmm. Hornet is really good at certain things, but it does missions that it's not really good at. And I could, you could say the same yeah. for the F 16, any multi role. Um, fighter and it's funny when when i was very new in the hornet and the new scary tactics were just coming out i remember like we we're in the brief and they were like well you know what we really need is an airplane that can go higher and faster and uh shoot farther and like one of, one of the guys was like did we just retire one of those <laughs> they just retired the Tomcat in 05 like we had one of those six yeah, yeah, like all the Tomcat guys were like, yeah, this is what we've been trying to tell you, idiots, you know? And yeah. at the time, I was like, shut it. But, you know, you go up, and I try to employ some of these tactics. I'm like, yeah, it would be nice to have, a, a, like, a real interceptor or whatever. But mm -hmm. I don't know. Like I said, can can, it, can the next airplane really be F.A.? I don't know. Well, it doesn't, Gonky. If history is our guide. <laughs> we're going to screw it up. <laughs> no, we're going to be talking about this new next gen fighter doing its first flight in 2055 nice. true <laughs> you true. know we're all going to be like we'll forget what we're even talking about halfway through <laughs> because there's other youtube channels like that yeah <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh all right too much <laughs> i uh so i accidentally skipped uh one that i want to go back to i don't know how to get that off of there so is doug great. back doug are you back for doug, real are you back I am back. Okay. If you, so if you can hear I, I me, wanted, I am back. Yeah. Uh, if you can hear me. Uh, John said, thanks for such a humbling remembrance. I was in the police academy and will never forget being told of what was happening and being reminded what I was signing up for. And that is thanks, John. going back to the 9-11 uh, memorial slash remembrance. I think that is also a time, you know, I, I do law enforcement and that, that was a more of a time when not only was the country together, but we weren't trying to make enemies out of everybody. You know, we weren't, there wasn't as much of an agenda because we were together on a lot of, a lot of things. Were you sheriffing? You weren't sheriffing then, were you? 2001? No, I was in college. I'm talking, you know, just in general. No, I was a kid. Was man. Telling I people he was a sheriff in bars. That's yeah, what I was doing. <laughs> like, whatever. Anyway. <laughs> 
I agree. Uh, I think, well, and it wasn't that we were together on a lot of things. We were together on one thing. Well, we were, but you know, the which brought us together in other aspects. first responders, you know, we, we became very pro military and very pro first responder Correct. because of that, because we got to see the good in people. And I will say this, you know, I mean, there's this troll that always follows me around and says that I'm a corrupt deputy with Harris County in Houston, which I've never been to. Oh. Uh, because I really? rode in a helicopter in Harrison County, which is also different than where I'm at. It's close. I can but see I will say that, you know, despite what you see in the media, the people that do these jobs are good people that want to help. And I think you still have the same caliber people that will run toward the sound of gunfire or run toward the danger now as you did back then. The problem is it doesn't fit any agenda. And we've lost that unity and the people that don't get me wrong, bad people, shitheads that do this job don't need to be in the job. You know, Ooh. if you're going to abuse your power, you abuse your authority. I don't want you doing this. You know, Great. you make it harder for everybody else. That goes for everything, you know, military, police, whatever. But I think still, we still have the same caliber people that we did back then. We just have a 24 hour news cycle that is, uh, on steroids with the internet, which is now, you know, the only thing that gets clicks is, you know, you and I talk about this gonky, what, what, what YouTube channels get clicks. It's not us. No. Just <laughs> back. no, it's whatever's the most sensational. And so that's what sells and that's what people see. And it becomes the law of primacy. You know, the first headline you see is, you know, this person did this to this demographic and then this happened and you never see the record corrected versus 9-11. It was like everybody's wearing an NYPD hat. Everybody's wearing an NYFD hat. You know, everybody's got their pro-military yellow ribbon. Everything was we support. Everything's going on from everybody. And I still think it's the same caliber people. It's just a different message. Yeah. That's all. Um, so anyway, this uh, Marky Mark says, smoke in the air. Never mind. Gonky had Taco Bell again. Did you did you toot, Gonky? What did somebody? Hey, don't Tommy worry about it, Gonky. Five dollars is five dollars. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not sure, but I'm going to say thank you. Anyway. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> Uh, Hiram says, if someone allowed to earn an FAA license to fly an aircraft, if they are a convicted felon, no pun intended. So you can, I think you can, not an ATP, right? Because it's the good moral character. Yeah. Uh, part of the ATP. Can you get a commercial? I don't know. I, I, I don't know, know. You can get a private. You can't get an ATP and you'll never get hired by an airline. Yeah. Hmm. So... I don't know. And then Ryan says, looks That's angled right. on other angles. So maybe the carrier, carrier. has the angle. Guy. Oh, I hope I see it. for their sake. My goodness. I looked Please. at a couple. I looked at a couple different. I mean, there was there was like there was people saying, oh, the deck is cracking and stuff. I was looking at all kinds of pictures of it. And I, I mean, like Wombat said, maybe when they finally paint them on there, it'll be evident. But it doesn't look. It doesn't it look really, angled like our angle carrier. But right, it's not as angled as it needs to be. <clears throat> as We're gonna find out. You, you'd like to be <laughs> Monty. Uh, thank you. No Thanks, message, Monty. just uh, out of the goodness of his heart. Thomas, as well, five dollars is five dollars for you. Oh, thanks, dude. Uh, janitor, janitor. Uh, question for Mr. Bronze Medalist. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer award winning. Thank you. It sounds better than bronze. Yeah, third place. Is bronze like third? Dude, yeah. that's all. Hey, the intimidator was number three. So let us and remember it's also dude. That that year we lost Dale. Oh, yeah, that's true. We don't we don't think about yeah. that. We lost Dale just like when yeah. we lost Harambe. I mean, a lot of things change when we lose these popular figures. Back in the original Top Gun days, uh being they had four or five different type aircraft on aircraft carrier. Did they have different LSOs for each type? F-14, uh, A6, S3, no, S3. even, even today, um, they have a team and there's members of each squadron on each team. So every team would have 
Hornet guy or two, single seat, dual seat, an E2 guy, you know, back when we had Tomcats, Tomcat guy, S3, they were all on the team. So, and you learned, you know, in order to get your qual, in order to become, you know, a wing qual and all that, you had to be able to wave. You know, you start with a field qual, which means I can wave the E2 or the Hornet, depending on what I'm called in, at the field. And then you go to a squadron qual, which means I can wave it at the boat. And then you go to a wing qual, which means you can wave any aircraft, day or night land or sea and that was kind of how that was your final qual so okay thank you and it's not like when you live where you work it's very easy to find an lso because it's not like we're out at the bar because of the one eye yeah yes you just laid out the training plan for the chinese congrats good job (laughs) views are only one bad that will fix it Uh, (laughs) the angle deck Uh, not important Make sure uh, you have Oakley sunglasses and no head protection. You got to have the protection. thing too for the, or is that Top Gun where they put the I Oakley never did sunglasses that. where they can hang them? I never you know, did that. Them. I just, I lost okay. a lot of sunglasses though. We're, we're off the rails. I have not read this report, so good luck to us all. Uh, but this came out a uh, Dassault Aviation Mirage F1 in Panama City, February 25th, 2021. I remember this day. We were, we're, we were at Eggland back then. So during takeoff roll from the runway equipped with a raised arresting gear system, the pilot of the turbojet-powered fighter plane noted no discrepancies upon reaching 100 knots. And before the airplane had reached a raised aircraft arresting gear system that was present across the runway, which is standard. Tendall always had that, right? <clears throat> mm-hmm. Takeoff roll continued to about 125 knots, which was just after the airplane had crossed the arresting system. The airplane suddenly swerved left as the airplane neared the left edge of the runway. It became airborne. While airborne orbiting near the airport, the front and rear seat pilots reviewed the applicable checklist procedures check or procedure checklist, emergency procedure checklist. English is tough. Discussed possible system failures and had pilots from another airplane provide a visual check of the accident airplane's landing gear. Based on the information provided and lack of an enunciation of any problem with the nose wheel steering system, the pilots attribute the sudden swerve to an issue with the left main landing gear. <clears throat> Although there was some discussion about a hard over of the nose wheel steering system, the pilot left it on, planned to turn it off uh, if the airplane veered during the emergency landing. It burned down fuel uh, and then landed on the right side of the 200-foot wide runway. After touchdown, the airplane veered to the left, traveling off the runway and onto the grass infield. The nose gear collapsed. The rear pilot initiated an unannounced ejection. Seems to be popular these days. Which should have resulted in the front seat also ejecting. However, the rear seat ejected successfully, but the front seat did not. The airplane came to rest, and both pilots sustained serious injuries. A post-accident invest- examination of the nose steering system revealed that the annular bearing of the distribution block fractured in overload with no evidence of pre-impact failure or malfunction. The fracture likely resulted from traveling over the raised arresting gear system at a high speed, <clears throat> a shock from which traveled from the nose gear into the distribution block, resulting in a fracture of the bearing brace. I'm guessing that's supposed to be a brace. Because of the fractured bearing, is it race? <laughs> Okay, uh, twice, it's me. The distribution block commanded a left turn consistent with the condition reported by the pilot during takeoff. Although the airplane checklist for a failure of the nose wheel steering did not include loss of control during takeoff, it is likely that had the nose wheel steering been disconnected upon landing when the nose wheel touched down, directional control would have been possible using differential braking for directional control. Authority and airplane likely could have been stopped safely. Post-accident exa- examination of the front seat pilot's ejection seat determined that it did not eject from the airplane because of impact damage to the aircraft structure that secured the lower ejection seat gun mount, which resulted in movement of the seat and subsequent separation of a gas line from the rear seat to the front seat, which made ejection of the front seat impossible. Oh, my God. Yikes. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the probable cause is he went over the uh, um, arrested gear. The donut. The donut. Why? Why is there more? Why is there more? We just talked about everything. Oh, yeah. there's more. Is there more? Does, this I mean, is like the, that was like the. Oh, this uh, is what all the, ha- we don't need to read all yeah, this. No. Yeah, I mean, we, we got the, the summary, we got, right? Yeah, we got it now. I think you got the summary. We got 10 pages, man. We don't need all this. No, basically the hit whole, the donut, broke the bearing. Well, 
previous similar event, according to the operator of the accident airplane in May 2020, an industri- industry competitor flying a similar make and model experienced a loss of directional control during takeoff that was attributed to having travel over a raised arresting gear system. As a result of the event, the operator of that aircraft prohibited crossing raised arresting gear systems with nose wheels at high speed. The operator of the accident airplane was not aware of the event. And so now they say don't do that anymore. NTSB did not... Uh investigate that first event it said in there that's interesting did uh well, it wasn't it didn't result yeah, in the didn't. loss of the aircraft yeah. does that one have the pictures mover that does not sir yeah there's some pretty good pictures of them showing no kidding that <laughs> donut um how it would break the bearing you're talking about the things that would hold the so that's yeah. what they hit it wasn't going over the wire it was they hit he hit the donut but, and the shock wave the, the, the shock from the lucky day <clears throat> yeah, I so just this past week I was a drill and uh I was talking to one of the greatest air to ground A10 pilots I know and he was flying the MU2 that day and he said that uh they chased like they chased the Mirage because they had directional control problem and like airborne it looked fine. And he said the MU2s landed and the, those dudes landed behind him and they got out of the MU2 and holy cow, <laughs> they ejected, you know, off the side of the Side of the runway, but what wasn't the guy? Now this is pure speculation. So again, Ooh, that's where this gets good. I mean, this is. I thought I re- when I remember <laughs> the, hearing about this, the guy who stayed in the jet was better off than the guy who ejected. I th- you I think that? It, yeah. I, th- I, th- I think report? It, I think it was uh, it, if the dude in the front would have ejected, he would have. Uh, died or been injured because of the damage i think sustained to the airplane i think yeah i mean it it seemed like i remember hearing that the guy i mean thank god they both survived but sure uh i thought that the the guy who actually got out was the one that was more seriously injured yeah yeah when the airplane came to rest the pilot secured the engine but was unable to get out of the airplane yeah, he's hurt. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the I think the backseater yep. actually ended up worse off. But there you go. Don't fly old French jets. Well, dude, don't hit. The, I mean, <laughs> even flying the thirty eight, flying the it doesn't matter what I was flying. I like you miss the donuts, man. Mainly because if you hit them, it'll knock the be- the gear out of battery. So I that's mean, the only that- reason I would miss them. I didn't think about it from this, but and again, everything we flew, the gear was so beefy. Not the T thirty eight. I mean, I well, I know. didn't fly that. Oh, yeah. So well, I flew man's plane. Okay, all right. Well, the child I'm not. Yeah. Not- <laughs> I, I, you know, okay. I, I would like the, you know, I would like the seat to work. That's, that's just a, that is preferred in an ejection seat aircraft. For I sure. would like. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> But granted, moving, they, the there's seat less damaged, of the right? The, that's why, like, the it, gas tube between the two right. seats damaged and it didn't fire, right? So that's crazy, man. Like, to think about that, like, how tough would it be to go back up flying one of those after you were in a plane that you couldn't eject out of but survived? I don't know if he went back flying, man. I mean, I, I don't know I, if he did either. I mean, I mean just from a mental <clears throat> standpoint, like, somebody's yeah. trying to tell you it's time to. All right, operator. We've lost. We've lost control yet again. Uh, Never we had do have some, some people from the audience, though. Question? Nope, nope. That's. I keep seeing best-selling author, and I want to talk about your bronze Lord star. Uh, <laughs> D. Stu star. says, "Where can we buy Gonky's children's books?" Uh, Stu, I'd love to tell you, but I'm not <laughs> allowed to promote my own books. I don't want to get in trouble, like well, a good friend of mine. But Wait, maybe Mover. No, it's just. I'll tell me. you, it's Amazon. It's just you me. I Amazon. can't even say my own name without it being promotional. So you're fine. It's on man. Amazon. Go look. It, Go look at my Instagram. <laughs> I plug it all the time on my Instagram because Gonky doesn't know what Instagram is. And yeah, it's easy. Okay. Thank Diane you. says, uh, I was across from the Holland Tunnel about to go into the city that morning. A tough memory. I never thought I'd fly the Hudson exclusion and around the lady many years later, a better memory. This stream is much appreciated. I love that wow. Wow. flying around, especially. Mm-hmm. I mean, at sunset, God, that's so. Oh, yeah. That's like one of my top aviation moments is yeah. flying around that. And the seven three, yeah, yeah, it's pretty cool. 
It's it's beautiful. It's I mean, it's just it it's like something out of a movie. I mean, it's mm-hmm. one of the coolest wow. things you'll ever do. Not you, you Gonky, because your your company probably can't afford to fly up there. Yeah, we're big yeah. city. We got to keep the cost down, bro. Yeah, those are not <laughs> your <laughs> people. Tours. Those are not your people, Gonky. Uh, uh, and Monty says, money. "Monty, money." Hey, Wombat, I'm not really a big reader. Me neither. I'm really, not a big reader. Coloring but books. I bought Nasty's book and read it. I was. T- it was totally awesome. I would have never bought it if it was not for your interview with him. Cool. Sounds like uh, nasty OG five dollars now. <laughs> yeah, dude. Call, <laughs> call him up. Be like, pay up, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of five dollars, thank you, Jason. Thanks, Jason. Appreciate that. It looks like fire fire, uh, man. And uh, Paul says, "Question for the wombat. Yeah, wombat, you're popular today. What do you think of the new Mustang GTD people? Yeah, well, they, no, they, it's they, a Mustang they, question, dude. It's right up your yeah. alley. That's true. Wow, wow. from you two, <laughs> really." Really, well, I mean, everybody signing knows. off. I'm don't act <laughs> yeah. like you don't. Don't act like it's news. It's not breaking news. Uh, well, it's an interesting it's, idea. It's way out of my price range. What is a Mustang is GTD? It? It's genuine a new, draft. Miller genuine draft. It's, it's an interesting. It's interesting. <laughs> you haven't seen the release on this. Is it? Yeah, was that the one that's like three hundred grand? Uh, yeah. That's why I didn't look at it because yeah. I can't. I mean, what was the point? Is what it like a GT40? With... Is it like the replacement for that? No, or... no, no, no. It's, it's a Mustang a G- with a carbon body, Mustang right? With a, yeah, with a... and a weird wing and a lot of price tags. And Yeah, it's for... Supposedly, yeah. it's a really, really good driving car, like competition-wise, like in that regard. But I mean, it's not... It's three hundred grand to look like Submariners. No. Is it, okay, let me ask you, since it's a Ford, dude, is it EcoBoost? Nice Whoa! Or... Doug, from good? the top rope. Doug, yeah. nice. Has it got a V8 yeah. in it, or is it a blown six? That thing looks terrible. I looks like honestly, I don't remember because I thing. saw it and I was like, "That is not something." Dude, that, that looks I like have to a ask Nissan. my wife if we could buy. So, yeah, I, I'm with Mover. It looks terrible a little... wheels yeah. too. Yeah, oh, not. Man. I mean, it's no yeah. Shelby. I'll tell you that. <laughs> well, it is part of the it's Mustang no Shelby family. Mustang. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, Monty again. Oh, it's continued. Lombat, I have now bought your book and am reading it. Mover, your books are next. Wait a minute. It's supposed to go the other way around. I've been around longer. Uh, I went to Charleston, South So Carolina. I have two books, just so we're clear. So he's got to get yeah. through both. <laughs> They're quick reads, though. Thank they you. Are. They uh, are. Last week, I saw the USS Yorktown and saw an E1. What is an E1? It's the piston power E2. Yeah. It's really it's pissed yeah. radial, dude. Oh yeah. my gosh. It has the teardrop dome on it. I, I learned so much cool. from you guys. I think yeah. it's not cool. useful. The E2 but learned... is bigger, but not twice as big. He had a Jet question. Power too, man. question. Okay. Uh Fizzenthorpe. Thanks, when man. I was a kid, I had a poster of all the aircraft in the Navy and Air Force. The selection sounds like a book gonky. <laughs> Okay, wait, let me get my... <laughs> <laughs> the selection was huge and beautiful, so to speak. Uh, Definitely now we not have talking about Gonky anymore. <laughs> from one contractor for everybody, for every mission, the F-35, we have devolved. That's not a question, that's a statement. Again, yeah. these are <laughs> this guy, is it not representative? Yeah, he's right. I, yeah. I read an article, I almost brought it up, because there was an article, the Czech Republic, Czech Right? Are they still a republic? The Czechs? Uh, they are talking about the F-35 being cheaper than the Gripen, and I'd like to check the math on that one. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting. Unless, I mean, unless it's being subsidized by the U.S. or something. Never Could know. be. Uh, this is probably also $5. I don't know about exchange rates, but thank you. Man. Thanks, man. Katie Little Wolf says, thank you for the humbling and tender, respectful, honest, heartfelt memorial question. Where did the Tomcats interjection originate from? It is not mine. Um, so oral, in, right? in Strike Fatron, no. Flap. Flap, Oral, and uh, Scorch. Oh, yeah. Scorch and Flap used to do that. So at, at Strike Fatron 204, uh, we used to have, did they, well, they call them dining outs in the Navy? What do they call yeah. them in the Navy? Yeah, dining outs dining or in. dining ins, whichever one you happen to be doing. One where you could bring a date. Mm-hmm. Both 
dining out. You can't bring a date to a dining in. Dining out. Yeah, yeah. dining out. Dining out. But anyway, every time had a date in his defense. So. Start, well, y'all used to make fun of me and say that my date was like a PR one or whatever because I, you know, the, they're like, was she even old? Never mind. No, it's because anyway, your date was Stoner's date the previous dining out. So. That's true. <laughs> that did. That is a thing that happened. Uh, sorry, actually, dude. it was the other way around. Actually, it was. She's good looking. Flip flop. She was a okay, doctor. Sorry. She was like some neurosurgeon or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, he's married now. So I know. Now it's just me. Uh lost. We're off the rails again. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So they would yell Tomcats, you know, and you got uh Tomcats, you know. And because because oh, they were Tomcat guys in a Hornet squad. Correct. And I just copied it because I did the DCS Tomcats one time and I was like, Tomcats, Tomcats, like you know, and whatever. And it stuck. I like it's it. stuck. And now people think I did it, which I will not take credit for it. Here you go. Speaking of dates, uh, Gonky, how hard is it to be married? Uh, I'm going <laughs> to deflect ask this the to, to Wombat. <laughs> <laughs> and be on cruise in the Navy. Uh, <laughs> I, listen, I will. I was not married when I went on cruise. And it was, I was like, I told myself I cannot be in active duty and be married because I saw how hard it was. So to speak. So to speak. That's right. And it it is very, very hard on marriage. That's all I have to say about well, that. Man. I'm over one. I'm not an expert on this either. So yeah, I was gonna say, isn't that kind of a sore subject for you, Wombat? Not sore, just not something. It's part of life. It's part of life. So yeah, it's yeah. Uh, it's tough, man. I mean, you're gone, and the thing, the hard part on the boat is, it's like. They just shut down comms, right? When it's time yeah. to move to the carrier, like they just shut everything down. You can send emails all day long, but they just go in the old outbox <laughs> mm-hmm. and they sit there and sit there. And then I can't tell you how many of my friends are like, man, my wife's pissed at me because I was supposed to email her and blah, blah, blah. And we're supposed to meet in port, but now she can't because I didn't. I mean, it's like, oh, yeah. it's already stressful. And then logistically trying to maintain some semblance of a relationship with your significant other even sure it's hard yeah. so no bueno uh wwe raw which i think is wrestling wombat awesome. was that you that replied to my comment about air boss voiceovers on facebook didn't know if it was that actually you is dude is there an imposter wombat no it was me it's so <laughs> cool and he won't take on getting wags in a full motion thank you yeah what happened to all that you and, promised uh, a lot of things it was me. Okay. I'm, yes. Um, and I'm working it. We've already been told the problem is we can get him in one out by where he lives, but it's a seven three and that's not really conducive <clears throat> to, to the situation. So if he can get out to here, then yeah, easy to get him in piece of cake. Okay. Uh, AT, thank you. But that's because yeah. his last message was waste of money, brains and time. Damn, that's hurtful. That is not what Wombat stands for. No, it's not. And, and you know, Wombat has honey, feelings. Not what He's Wombat. Wombat, not Honey Badger. Wombat no. does care. <clears throat> honey Badger does Wombat, care. What it actually stands for is worse than that. I'd take Wombat that. Wombat actually gets his feelings <laughs> hurt. So please let's not be mean to the Wombat. It, yeah, and it's all caps, man. You can't spell it wrong. I know. People do it's it all, all the time. People do it all the time, but it's all caps it's with an exclamation at the end. And there's only one O in mover. <laughs> unless i'm unless i'm texting him <laughs> no then you had a b uh, well, that's that's because he's people call you arm, you gronky yeah. yeah it's three 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 four 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 i love it exactly <laughs> uh let's see the janitor is back two dollars so doug can have a small camera square <laughs> i don't know how to do that if i could well i mean i guess we could do something like that that's the brady but now it's Yeesh. just you, Gonky. Yeesh. That's me old. All right. And, we'll uh, have to figure that one out. Uh, and then Gonky, sorry, man, got nothing for you, but $9. <laughs> I do Money like the thanks, man. love trying to figure out these call signs. Like, I'm the I, only I, one that's I, honest around here, you boys or whatever. I, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because based on our three call signs, you're the only one that you can be honest on. That's that's bull. No, dude. I yeah, know why you're. I know, I know your call sign. That is not 
Well, no, it's just become so much folklore to it now that I can't say it. But yeah, Gonkies. I mean, that'd be a lot. It would be the mover and mover show. Mover (laughs) mover and sometimes Wombat show. YouTube YouTube Um, would remove me for for violating (laughs) rules against myself. I mean, (laughs) we can't say a very famous aviator's name because of you. I know. All right, Douglas, let's get this show back on track. Back on track. Mm, that's, back on that's, timeline. That's my, my responsibility, is it? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Douglas, welcome. Welcome back. So, can we just pause for a minute and see how beautiful the T thirty eight is? That's one of my favorite airplanes. Yeah, it's beautiful to look at, not from the inside though. <laughs> the article is about nine hundred airmen who are waiting in the pipeline to start flying airplanes for training. They've been waiting around three months in some cases, and. They're having this. I don't know about you guys. You can speak to this, but for me, this seems like it would be a big letdown. They're being taught how to do aircraft maintenance, put them on the flight line, <laughs> marshal aircraft in and park, get them connected to the mission. So the hope they're kept gainfully employed. The T-38 Talon, in particular, used to train fighter, future fighter and bomber pilots, is frankly struggling. Production ended in 1972. So the article said that the, the training aircraft are at least 20 years old, but. 1972 is a lot longer than that. That's military 20 years old. Yeah, that's yeah. that's government well, okay. 20 years. The T6 too, right? <laughs> so the T6 is pushing 20 years. That might be what they're is talking it about. Already? Jeez. They're yeah, waiting on the T7. 2000, early 2000s. So I'll throw that on the floor for you gentlemen, so to speak. This All right, isn't so, really anything different, right? I mean, this is... No. no I'm, it's, not, it, I'm not saying... Yes and no. I mean, so did casual, you guys ever get stashed? Casual lieutenants are... Well, no, I was a reservist, so... I right, chose. Gonky, did you path. get stashed before you started? No. So casual lieutenants are a thing because I've got buddies that I went to pilot training with that uh, we can take that down, Douglas. I'll move it for you. I went to UPT. Uh, Deuce was one of them. He actually hung out with the aggressors uh, at Nellis, you know, and that was a very common thing back then mm-hmm. uh, where, you know, you didn't. I know I'd never heard of PA and usually they try to keep you some flying related thing, but. It doesn't surprise me. And actually, I'm not going to say it's bad that they go to maintenance because you're not flying. Go learn and go learn. Go learn about the people. You know, that way you appreciate the jet even more. And it gives you that breadth of experience, the depth that you need to be a good officer. So I'm not I'm not opposed to that. What I will say, and this is the thing that pisses me off about this article, is that the T-38 was outdated 40 years ago. Or, or more. It never was, you know, it's a Century Series trainer, you know, so F-100s, whatever, you know, small wings. And then instead of continuing our, our timeline for development, we just said, okay, we're going to put new avionics in it. And then it took them a while to put new seats in it. Dude, that jet, when I flew it, you know, and this, I'm old, right, 2007, it had new avionics, but an old seat, the same seat you and I flew gonky. And, you know, and that's a, put the parachute on your back and you get thrown out and then you do your, the parachute does its thing, yeah. but, oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's like, a t- that's like a tweet, right? That's how it's. Yeah. I mean, it's very similar. And so, you know, it's not a good seat or it wasn't back then. Now it's a little bit better, but it's, it's. It's a good trainer for skills. Like it'll make you a good pilot, right? I mean, it's it's hard to fly, but as far as efficiently making you a good pilot, I don't think so because it hasn't simulated what our nation flies for 50, 60 years. I mean, it was almost obsolete, you know, within 10 years of being out there and instead of spending the money. So now we run into the situation that okay, it's outdated, I get that. But now it's outdated plus it's a 67-year-old airplane. And the airframes, the engines are having problems. The airframes are having, like, we have so many, I mean, on the flip side, it's worked, right? It's, it's, it's worked because it's very simple and there's not a lot of systems and stuff like that. But we have done such a poor job of developing a new trainer that now we're at the T7 and the T7 is just now, you know, they're just doing their first flights and whatever. And look how far that was behind some point down the road. And we know why the military industrial complex is why, but at somewhat part down the road, we lost the ability to develop something quickly or adapt something quickly. 
even the T6, the T6, they didn't, you know, clean sheet design that they took, they went to Pilatus and said, okay, well, we're going to do that, but then we're going to go to, um, uh, was it Raytheon and, uh, beach, you know, and they were like, okay, we're going to call it the T6. It'll be made in America, but it's based off of this. Like we've lost the ability to make anything fast. We've lost the ability to make anything, you know, reasonably efficient and cost effective. So when we have these shortages, we are like, well, T-38 is broken. What are we going to do? I don't know. Let's change your pilot training altogether. I mean, come on. You know, we should have had this 20 years ago, 30 years ago, more. Go ahead. Well, they all, <clears throat> the, <clears throat> sorry, the article also uh, talked about the pilot shortage, right? Them not being able to, to make pilots. And, you know, I, I'm... Having experienced uh, that organization, I would say they have a uh, <laughs> they have a problem with losing talent more than they have a problem of gaining and training talent. Everything you said is one hundred percent valid, mover. But uh, you know, for the exact same reason that all pretty much all the branches are going to miss the recruiting numbers this year is the exact same reason why the Air Force can't keep pilots. Um, that's all I have to say about that. Yeah, that's that's our own views and doesn't represent the the DOD. But yeah, you're right. You're right, Gonkey. I mean, you've got and there are people working on this, so it's it's not like they don't know. There's both ends. There's actually all three. I was corrected on this. I talked to a friend of mine who does this like every day. It's not just production. It's not just retention, but then the middle pipeline of training and um, sorry, recruiting production retention production is a problem too, because they either no experience, not enough experienced IPs. That's a retention thing because people aren't sticking around. Not enough uh, jets. You know the T thirty eight thing we just talked about. T sixes have had ejection seat problems. They've had all kind of problems, and it's it's the butterfly effect. One little thing can like this pipeline is like a house of cards. And when one little thing ripples, it can ripple throughout the entire system. And then they make a change two years down the road and then a new ripple happens and they just fix the old ripple. And now we're, we're in this constant, this thrash because, you know, people aren't happy. Jets aren't happy. Well, I mean, you, <clears throat> you talked about why does it take 10 years to bring a Oh, it takes more than that. 10 years would be optimistic. No, no, but I'm saying like, okay, why does it take 15, 20 years to bring a, a primary trainer online? Like a T6 yeah. when the airplane basically already existed. Right. Um, so like it's that same bu bureaucracy. Yeah. But a different flavor. You know, it's like, why, why can't, why can't trained aviators just do their job? Like I, I, jo I personally joined for one reason as a fly airplanes dude. And like, I, I don't, it blows my mind when they're like, oh, we can't, we can't keep pilots. There's a fighter pilot shortage. There's a pilot shortage in general. And it's like, you can kick and scream at the top of your lungs. Like, I have, I'll fly it, <laughs> you know? Um, and there's, there's hundreds of guys like me. And yeah, they, they just like, ah, no, you, uh, you don't have these, you know, you didn't do this. You don't have this box checked. It's like, dude, this is all just bureaucracy, but you know, they're, they're willing, willing to flush the billions of dollars of human capital down the drain and then they wonder why hey we got a void to fill oh we can't fill. then on the front end like you said so i guess you know three-part problem on the front end they're like well we don't we don't actually don't have the capacity to do this and oh by the way our airplane is 50 years too old i mean it's uh i, I kind of think they make you know they they get a sleep in the bed they made you know that sounds a little harsh but I mean, that's well, until it affects readiness. I mean, that's yeah, it and it like, is. who loses the American taxpayer. Yeah, it, it I mean, it, it it absolutely does. That's why they're, they're writing articles about it, trying to bring yeah. light. And like you said, good people are trying to fix it. But um, I don't know it's tough. Machine, yeah. The it, machine, it, dude. And well, there's also of the machine is we we live in a system where we're always competing against each other for promotions. So it's who's got the good idea. It's the good idea fairy, right? I will, you know, oh, I've got this great idea. We're going to change, you know, UPT this way. We're going to change UPT that way. And it's like, dude, the system, it worked. Like, 
why are we fixing things just so you can have an OPR officer performance report bullet? You know, like the, that, that whole promotion system by itself doesn't accurately refre- reflect a tactical aviator <laughs> or an aviator that, you know, or an aviator in general, it's not made because everybody's got to be fair and we've got to compete against people that don't fly airplanes. And it's like, dude, this is, this is, I don't, I don't think it, I don't think it fairly stacks any, any job. I mean, you could read the bottom guy and like, you know, a, a civilian who reads the OPR or what do we call it in the Air Force or in the Navy? Fair 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 Fair. You could read the bottom guys like uh, main body, like of what's written, of what he's done in the past year. You're like, this guy is on track, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, he's actually our worst dude. <laughs> yeah. well, well, and that's the thing is, is like, we've got a priority problem. Oh. Popping my keys tonight. Uh, we've got a priority system issue right we we, it's i think it comes back to the roots i don't know does the navy have this problem because i was going to say it could come down yes yes whatever it is yes (laughs) well i mean because i was going to say that could be an army thing you know i mean the roots of the army air corps from the army the army doesn't trust its people you know it's it's very directive it's very you know well we need to make sure you know we've got these levels and layers and get mother may i versus the navy in my experience which is more you're an officer you're going to be held to that level of accountability, but you're also going to be expected to make those decisions. I'd agree with that, generally speaking. Sure, yeah. I'll agree. Okay, well, that sucks, but I don't think it's that unusual. I mean... I do miss flying the 38, Doug. I think it's a good-looking airplane, like you said. It is a good-looking airplane. I just think that it doesn't train you. People will argue with me because they'll go, well, you know, it's a it's a harder, harder jet to fly, which makes you a better pilot, but... I will also say, because we're about to get to, we'll talk about the UPT 2.5 next, but it's, I think in the progression of how you're training, your most difficult trainer should be the, you know, early on. And then by the time you get to advanced, it should be more preparing you for the next jet. So you can go solo your F-35. Like, I don't think you need a jet that necessarily has the issues that you'll never run into in an F-35 or an F-16 or an F-15. Like, in that case, you're needlessly putting people at risk and students at risk. Yeah, so basically you need more of a weapons platform trainer vice an airplane. Right, because by the time you get to that phase of pilot training, it's no longer about how to fly. It's about how to tactically move at the speed of a jet yeah. You know, move, move your mind forward at 300 knots versus 150, 200 knots, 350 knots, whatever it is. It's moving faster and working systems. That's yeah. the trainer. You don't need to worry about the buffet. You don't need to worry about, you know, the final turn stall killing you anymore. This is flying an airplane in a tactical environment where flying is secondary. It's employment. That's 100. Dude, because I flew the T-45A, which is just like the T-38A that we flew, all steam gauges. But when I, when I got to the Hornet, I, I remember the, they're like, go to your uh, whatever data sub level. And I, I just I, I literally said, what is a sub level? Like, what are you talking about? Am, am I sitting in an airplane? And I mean, it was man, the learning curve was yeah. steep because like, you know, the T-45 is all flying and the Hornet. It's all, you know, it's like 10 percent flying and 90 percent pushing buttons for uh, weapons right so yeah well systems management you know that's yeah. that becomes the part that's going to kill you when you start getting in these because dude the, the viper's easy to fly you know i'm sure uh deuce was on here he was talking about the f-35 is the easiest jet he's ever you know he's had his best landing ever in the f-35 the jets are not tough to fly what is now causing mishaps is systems management where they don't know what mode they're in you know am i an auto throttle apc whatever that is now the problem and a t38 is never going to give you that because it's okay you know left right up like it it does what you ask it to do because it's all mechanical linkages and hydraulics and you know the jet's doing whatever you know it's 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 gawky's internet i think we can't, um we can't use i don't want to go no to get back to to just finish this thing before you move on to what you're about to talk to um, put the banner up. You might as well. Cause as soon as I start talking about this stuff, um, this 100% in my opinion can be attributed to the fact that we promote piss poor leadership 90% oh. of the time. 
Um, and I can prove it because in 2012, when I joined uh, Trey Wing One and Meridian, I remember talking to one of the skippers in one of the, you know, VT7, VT9. He had just gotten back from PERS, right? So the Bureau of Personnel. And they brought up, this is 2012, 2013 timeframe, 2012. They were bringing up the airlines starting to hire. And, you know, he, as a skipper of the squadron, was very concerned about losing instructors, losing readiness, right? Not everything we're talking about right here, right? Not being able to get people through the pipeline. And the admiral in charge said, we don't see that as a problem. I remember and now, that. And look, and look forward on how that worked out, right? 2014, all of a sudden, every airline started hiring, right? It went nuts. I remember. Well, and I remember talking to my dad about that. And I was like, can you believe this guy? Like, he's in charge of personnel. And he doesn't see it as a problem. And my dad, as much as I give my dad a hard time, he said something that will never, I'll never forget this. He goes, you misunderstood what the Admiral said. And this is fundamentally what is wrong with our military and the bureaucracy right here. Keep the banner up because I don't want you guys getting in trouble for this. What the Admiral said was, is we don't see that as a problem. What he meant was, I don't see that as my problem. Because by the time the actual floodgates opened, he was going to be done with that job, right? So True. the problem is now you take promoting piss poor leaders that were the were the box counters and all this to these positions, but now they're dealing with people that left them problems that they didn't see as their problem. You have the culmination of both of those, and that's why we don't have trainers that are worth a damn. You have people backlogged, and it trickles down into morale, the guy that wants to stay in, but he's like, you know what, dude, screw this. I don't want to do this anymore. I got buddies who are getting out and making what at the airlines I'm done. So now you have a retention problem and it all ties into that. In my opinion, it's, it's the bureaucracy and the, and the promoting the wrong people. Well, part of the wrong promoting, reasons. Well, part of it too, is you're promoting people that have checked the boxes. Correct. Right. Cause you put all these like, well, we need to have a master's degree. You need to do air command and staff college. You need to do that. So you go do air command and staff college and the assignments like, okay, we want you to go to this discussion board and we want you to post an article and you get 50 points for posting the article and 20 points for responding to somebody else's art article. And you go read through all the articles and they're all pretty much the same. And all the comments look like drones have re responded because it's like fascinating. You said this, and I think this is great. And then the next guy, that's interesting. You said this, and I think this. That's fascinating. Like it's like you have to use these this word salad of stupid stuff, and it's like, where's the critical thinking? You know, where's you the actual anymore, where's the best. actual leadership of hey, here's how you deal with an airman with a, a mental health issue, with a mental health crisis. How do you deal with somebody who's suicidal? How do you deal with somebody who just had a problem at home? Because you're a babysitter when you become a commander. You're dealing with 100%. all the problems of your people to try to keep them going. You're dealing with the strategic and tactical levels of how do I keep my squadron ready for the fight? How do I keep the airplanes flying? How do I keep my people motivated? How do I keep them wanting to do that? Not, you know, is China our next existential threat? No. The squadron commander, dude, that's not your, that's not your wheelhouse. And whether or not you think an article is interesting or not, who cares? Teach me how to deal with people. Mm -hmm. Teach me how to lead as a servant leader. Teach me how to lead from the front. And that it becomes the problem because we don't have enough servant leaders. We don't have enough people. Nobody that even say, knows what that means anymore. Well, they have that's the thing is so the, poorly. Think of the best squadron commanders you ever had. They were the ones or, or skippers or whatever. They were the ones that could stand up in front of a room of fighter pilots and at the end of whatever they said, you you said, I'm going to follow that dude in a combat yep, or, 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 or chick or whatever, ma'am, whatever it is, I would follow that person through the gates of hell because I know they're, they're credible. They are, uh, you know, they're not going to take me down a rabbit hole that, that's going to get me killed. And if they do, it's because it's the only way and that mission has to be Because, out. you know, that's, that's mission it. failure, mission success. Yeah, You're absolutely right. Correct. I think we just have lost track of how to how to find leaders in in, in just in general. I think it, it permeates well, it's because we don't train any leadership. Through, well, it's not just the military though. It's everywhere. It's oh, everywhere. Everything everybody's is so political... afraid of hurting everybody's damn feelings. It's ridiculous. Yeah, right. I don't care. Sorry, we got <laughs> a rant. It has nothing to do. All right, Douglas. Uh, actually, you know what? Let's let's see what the kids at home are saying real quick. 
uh, chocolate sandwiches official gave you two uh, wombat bucks. Oh, it's me. Mover. If you had to fly one forever, A4, F1, A4, dude. Oh, damn. Yeah. That's not even, it although I am a little tall for it. I've heard if you're over six feet, it's a rough. You're not over six feet. I'm six one, dude. <laughs> Whatever. Me too. You are not. <laughs> I'm taller than you. Uh, the more you guys talk you. about <laughs> This is awesome. David Speaking Thomas of leadership says, and servant leadership, we're going to go back to being children now. <laughs> the more you guys talk about Gonky's call sign, the worse my mind goes, as it should. And you're nowhere as near it what should. it actually means. Yeah. yeah. You'll still be offended, even yes. at the worst depths of your mind. You'd hear the uh, internet go silent. Yeah. Currently waiting for, uh, was that Army Reserve MEPS to clear me to actually go to MEPS for this board? Deadline, going to be a photo finish away for the March board. AR MEPS? Arkansas maps. It could be Arkansas maps. Could be for the guard. Yeah. Keep trying. Cause yeah. Well, if you miss the March board, I mean, don't give up. There's, there's going to be a board after March. Yeah. Good uh, luck. Though. Th this says, was that a local air show? Got to see a Boeing P eight Poseidon, AKA 737 up close and talk to the pilots. Wombat gonky. You guys ever train with one pretty cool <laughs> plane that can drop torpedoes and fire harpoons. Okay. Yeah. No, I haven't. Um, yeah, they replaced the P3. That's about all I know. <laughs> Flying a 737 sounds. Oh boy. Yeah, I think they I fly around the low. Harpoons, oh, boy. Torpedoes. Techno Faisal back says we're not ready for any serious war. We would lose. We never have been. Uh, I don't think we won one. In oh, here we go. <laughs> Tim, Tim says maybe if we weren't being led by legit morons from top to bottom. I know. Dod. <laughs> I can't comment on free, that, but free thank speech, you, Tim. bro. <laughs> yeah. Nathan says Nathan. America's never been ready for any war we've gotten ourselves into, and we've done pretty well for ourselves. So I'm not worried. Have we though? <sighs> Depends on what the bureaucrats in Washington allow to happen. I mean, Correct. what's the definition of pretty well? Killing tens of thousands of your own people for no real reason? I don't know. Okay, now Gonky, that's a yellow light, dude. <laughs> this is it. That's also a yellow light. That was angry. Gonky, that, was, that is the answer. <laughs> that, that was, was, a, that was angry. Way. Uh, janitor <laughs> says, uh, "I grew up watching the T thirty eight T birds, uh, best T birds. Those are the ones that actually had the mishap." Mover and I have flown one of those jets. We have. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm dead serious. Not the mishap ones. Not one of the mishap ones. One of the. <laughs> no, one of the uh, Thunderbird yeah. uh, jets was in our squad. Did you have to wear a tighter flight suit when you flew it? Oh, no. Plexi, uh, which I think is an ongoing joke, right? The whole Plexi. Yeah, Plexi's. I, I guess I'm part of a joke that's going on with Plexi, which I haven't figured out yet. So. Is Gonky's call sign an acronym? Pseudo acronym? Big words. Mm. It's a mixture. Like mine's thing. a pure acronym, right? But yeah. his is like a pretend. Acronym. I don't want to give too much intel. The, okay. The, the it's like you know sector seven call. kind of stuff. <laughs> Let's move on, Douglas. You're up. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Hey There's DCS. Gonkies. There's yeah. That's us playing DCS. I'd like to Nerds. know what, what he's flying and what he's chasing. But anyway, so would he? He's in a T6. That, that's close so would trail. he? <laughs> is it okay? Trail. So it's, it's formation, not combat. That's not DCS, though. The um, headline is undergraduate pilot training 2.5 is now just UPT after being fully implemented. There's details on an interview with General Clark Quinn, Major General Clark Quinn, who took on the job several months ago, overseeing everything from UPT to other types of training, including SEER. And he addresses some concerns about the pace of training. There has apparently been some criticism that people are going into, um, I guess, advanced levels of flying too quickly, getting wings on the T6s and then moving um, more quickly than they would have otherwise. But he's not concerned about it. He said that they've added a lot of simulation and vr flying and he identifies it as being better than sitting in a chair with the cardboard tape to the wall i'm not disagreeing that, that it's better than cardboard tape to a wall there there's a part in here go down there's a there's a whole thing about iff being replaced oh i missed that there it is right like there the squawk <laughs> ubt isn't the only thing that has These been two. scroll up scroll up scroll up scroll up scroll up scroll up 
Uh, the 19th Air Force introduced a new fighter. Oh, no, you scrolled up too much. This is the worst. We're in a, we're in a PIO of, of scrolling uh, right there. Above, above the picture or below the picture? Uh, below the picture. Uh, combining the T-38 undergraduate training and introduction to fighter fundamentals. It's the FBF. Uh, I'll tell you, it's really just taking two different syllabus. Wouldn't it be syllabi? Should connecting them together. It's not a huge Lepistus. refinement. It's not a huge leap to technology. It's too soon to draw any conclusions from the new FBF course. To an extent, the same true for UPT. Uh, I would say to get a full assessment, probably five years. Of course, we can make immediate changes. Immediate changes. I'm not saying we're going to wait five years for an adjustment. Um, but hey, it's a syllabus we'll touch on again. So uh, that was probably the biggest takeaway. Although, Gonky, what do you think about giving somebody a wing? Make it, That's what the Navy does, right? They give them wings. Uh, T-45s. Depends on what you're doing, right? So if you're a jet guy, you get it at the end of phase two T forty fives. Um you, you always, yeah, you always get it at the very end of your training before you go to your fleet aircraft. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I, I so I see what he's saying, right? It's if you're flying more and you're using this more to chair fly, okay. Mm-hmm. Not that I did a whole lot of chair flying. I mean I did. You know, I did. what chair I would run through stuff in my noggin, but I never sat and pretended like I was, you know, that, that stuff. I never did that because you know. till now when you play DCS and then, well, that's with VR goggles, your oh, yeah. eyes, your eyes are wide open. Um, so I never did that, but I did think about it a lot and I went to the UTDs. So it's trainers with no visuals, you know, so like part task trainers mm-hmm. and touch switches. Mm-hmm. So that's the, to me, the thing is you need a cockpit that you can like, I can do a blind cockpit sweep. You know, I know where every switch is. I know what it looks like. VR, as you know, doesn't give you that impending sense of doom. Like even a, a, a full, you know, closed sim will give you because you don't feel like you're actually sitting in a cockpit unless it's like a hundred percent replication of I reach here. Like if you ever have to grab a mouse to touch, to click something, your immersions are gone. Yep. Uh, so, Yes, it's it's an aid. It's obviously helpful, but is it a replacement for being in a jet? Absolutely not. What they said about IFF, I love it. So, as as you may not know, because you guys are Navy guys and you're giving me a blank stare, when you finish, <clears throat> so in UPT, right, in undergraduate pilot training, you go to T-38s. And the syllabus is almost a carbon copy, or it used to be, of T6s. So you do all the same stuff. Contact, instruments, low-level, formation, advanced aerobatics, all that stuff. Except you're doing it at T-38 now. And then you would graduate. Are you okay, Wombat? Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm yeah, listening. It looked like something happened. Uh, <laughs> it looked like I'm something listening. Happened. But so you graduate, you got your wings. And then, you know... Six to nine weeks later, you show up at your IFF squadron. Back in my day, you know, I went to Randolph. Some people go to like the same base that they're at because it depended on it was a separate squadron. And the whole point of IFF was to prepare you to become a fighter pilot, intro to fighter fundamentals. Are you wing? Yes. Uh, You're okay. You're a winged aviator at this point. So if when you show up, they pretend like they're a fighter squadron. You know, it's uh, the deadly black eagles and, you know, you got the patches and everything is you got the squadron bar, you got a vault, you know, it's everything is let's pretend we're fighter pilots in a T-38, which goes back to my previous statement about the T-38 being about 30 years too old, because then they were using the T-38, you know, to do turn circle entries and to do BFM. And you're like, dude, this thing is not this straight wing aircraft at 405 knots plus or minus five knots is nothing like a Viper that gives you a hundred knot window. You know, it's nothing like shooting, you know, a nine X or whatever. And uh, I'm still angry about that from back in the day, but that's a whole nother story with my aim nine Papa. But, uh, (laughs) the thing was, it was a lot of haze and it used to be a huge washout program. It used to be, you know, IFF was where, you know, you, you could reasonably get through pilot training, but IFF was where they said, no, nah, you're not fighter. You're not fighter material. They'd wash people out and stuff. They stopped doing that later on because they realized they were running into a shortage. But the it, it was kind of like a, a haze, especially since it's the same aircraft. To combine it with pilot training, I think is pretty much the same thing. 
you know, I think all the stuff we did in IFF, we could have done in UPT. There was nothing that said the only difference is the level of instructor pilot is different because IFF is considered a fighter assignment, still considered like an 11 F. So, uh, which I don't know if it is an 11 F, but it's still a, a fighter tour. So you get fighter pilots doing this UPT you get all kinds of flavors, including C-17, heavy, or whatever that could teach in the, the T-38, which those dudes, God love them, have no idea what it's like to be a single-seat fighter pilot. And it's very blind leading the blind when it comes to trying to teach fighter fundamentals and that. So that could create a problem. But I do agree with combining it with UPT and having it be one syllabus because that's what the Navy does. You guys do all your tactics in like you don't go to a separate squadron. It's just okay, next phase. Correct. Yeah, that's uh <clears throat> phase one, <clears throat> phase one and phase two. And I think I mean <clears throat> Wombat actually taught, right? You taught both phase one and phase mm -hmm. two, right? And so they probably I remember when I went as a student in phase two, it was all well, back then it was all like A6 guys, Tomcat guys, Tomcat. Like two, two Hornet guys. Yeah, I know. We had a Tomcat guy at IFF. I flew with him. He was awesome. One of the coolest guys. When you were a student? Oh, yeah, I flew with a, uh, an IFF instructor that was a former Tomcat guy. He taught, really? he did my BSA ride, basic service attack, where we did, you know, serve little wagons, if you will, yeah. in Navy speak. Yeah. Yeah. He was really cool, really laid back one of the cooler guys to fly with because you get a lot of Eagle dudes that want to go to do IFF and oh my God. Anyway, continue. Yeah. It's just, I, I think it would be kind of weird to get your wings and then still go to another squad and fly the same airplane in a haze fest. Basically. I mean, I, I mean, in my mind, when you get wings, it's like, see ya. <laughs> well, you've earned respect, right? It's like, I am a winged aviator treat me as i get it i don't have the experience but like you know at least for me when i got to the rag as a hornet guy it was um uh, i it was definitely better true they treated me like i gotta get this guy ready because he might go to my old squadron and i don't want him to mm -hmm. be good vice you know in the training command it was a lot more let's see if you know he can actually do this right mm -hmm. so so i think it's good like you said mover i don't i don't see any reason I thought IFF was kind of kind of a bad idea when I first heard about it. It it depends on I think a lot of it depends on who what when, every there's everybody's experience is different. You know when when I went through um cuz I I you know this first place I'd ever hooked a ride, right? And when I tell people what I hook for, people are like, "Really? That's not the point of IFF." So, and hook is an unsat where you you fail the ride. And because like in theory, IFF is supposed to just get you that fighter mentality, right? So let's, how do we set up offensive sets? You know, where we line up, line abreast, mile and a half, you know, get your parameters, just get a basic. We're not expecting you to employ the jet. And the big picture instructors were like that. Some, you know, we're like, oh my, you know, let's, you know, great sortie. And then you go to the debrief and they're like, oh yeah, well, uh, you know, the, the weapon system of the T-38, you didn't properly employ it. And it's like, dude, come it on. doesn't man. exist. Yeah. Th this <laughs> thing is all magic bullets. Who cares? So there was that piece to it. Um, <clears throat> and it just depended on where you were. And I think in the olden days, it was even worse because that was how they, you know, that was the last chance that they had to screen somebody out who wasn't single seat ready, it's, you know, because that's, that's what you're going to go to, a single seat mentality. And so I think when the risk going back to this, right, so I agree with it in some ways, but the risk now, which they've already been doing, so I guess it's, it's not, is when you don't have a way to screen people and you're just pushing everybody through now, the assumption of risk then goes to the, the basic course, the RTU, the, the, the F 16 schoolhouse, mm -hmm. the F 22 schoolhouse or whatever. And so now you're saying, okay, rubber stamp, rubber stamp, rubber stamp. Okay. Now he's in an F 16. And now instead of a T 38, he's flying a Viper with live ordnance. You know, he's flying a Viper with 20 Mike Mike. So, I, I do see a, a big risk. And even then, now the B course is like, hey, we got a production problem. 
because everybody's having these production problems. It's not just UPT. It's the B courses, you know, whatever. So then they go, okay, well, we'll just push them off to the mission qualification training. Then you get mishaps where it's the dude's first time tanking at night and he's doing a seed mission. And now it's like they're overwhelmed because, like I talked about before, you get these pipeline problems and it's the butterfly effect. One little thing ripples through the whole thing. And what is the end result? The end result is not, oh, we've got fighter pilots that are sitting on their asses being public affairs officers. It's we just crash jets in for perfectly good airplanes. We crash jets that shouldn't have been crashed. That's where we run into problems when we try to push people through instead of properly giving them the opportunity to learn. And if they regress, okay, but the rubber stamp is the problem. Well, it's good they realize, I mean, at least at UPT they have a problem because, I mean, this 2.5, that's, they're trying, I mean, they're trying to fix the problem, right? They got roasted. I think it's General Ellis or something. Uh, When this first came out, all the meme pages, yeah, like, totally roasted this dude, and he went after all of them. Yeah, like, he went at like he was not a you know oh views are my own all that stuff, but he was not somebody that took criticism lightly, and there was a little bit of a, a backlash both right. ways where you know the 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 experienced fighter pilots or trainer pilots or whatever said, hey, this is a bad idea, and how do we express that through memes? And instead of like, okay, let's have a powwow and figure out how to do this. It became, I'm crushing you. I, you know, don't do this meme page and make fun of me. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, I'm sorry, there's no replacement for real flying. No, not at all. And you know, I, I don't know. I, I move around, I was kind of like, yeah, I, I would sit in a chair and I close my eyes and visualize stuff. I was, I really wasn't like technically chair flying, but I did a lot of, yeah visual. visualization right and i think i don't know man like technology is good but like i i think that is i think that would be better than than vr because do vr you just put the goggles on there's i mean it's easy right i think it has its it's uh, i've obviously got more time in in dcs i mean it's, there's I mean, but it's easy right i mean when i sat there i remember closing my eyes i'm like all right the switches, you know, and I'd start thinking about the switches and like, because it was new to me, you know, so I had to create, like I had to create the cockpit in my head. And so I, be- I was more familiar with it. I, I, at least that's, that's what I remember. Yeah. I, I chair fly even in the 38, you know, a couple of years ago, I'd be walking yeah. the dogs going, okay, I'm going to get in the jet. <laughs> I'm going to check in on, on, you know, ox and flip the switch. And I'm going to check in on a pry. I'm going to say this, I'm going to do this. Here's the next thing I got to do and stuff. I mean, dude, that's why UPT, I barely slept. Because my mind, I'd be, I'd lay down and I'd be like, okay, what, yeah. what am I going through this sortie? And you would never turn it off. You could never just be like, okay, I'm ready, you know, whatever. So I agree. Everything helps to me. You know, if you can get a little bit more, if it's not in lieu of, I'm all for it. It's when you start replacing yeah. valuable seat time and in some cases that may be only, you know, all you have. What I worry about is it's a, a, not a one for one now, but what happens when budgets start getting cut and cut and cut and they're like, well, we have this UPT 2.5 thing and guess what? The VR, you know, it, it's only 6% less flying, but here we go. It It is more expensive to lose a jet and a pilot than it is to spend money on flying hours. Yep. For all the money. Cause you can't put a price on a life. Yeah. They'll try, but you can't put a price on a life. And we do people a disservice if we do not train them to the max extent that we possibly can and give them all the tools that they need to succeed. Yeah. They even, don't do that though, man. They, they got even, a budget. Even washing people out that don't need to be there. You do somebody a disservice if you push them through, you know, if at Wombat, you know, you know, I mean, you, you and I have talked about this at, at every level, doesn't matter what you're doing. If somebody is a danger to themselves or others in whatever job they're doing and you let them keep going, you're just as responsible when the bad things start happening. Yep. So, all right. Well, enough on that. Any other reattacks before we go to the next one? We're, uh, okay. Not 
Uh, Douglas, we got wait, Richard Rob says, what's Doug stand for? It's, <laughs> it's just his name. Not it's, it stands for Douglas <laughs> without <laughs> Doug. That's out of the bag. <laughs> <Doug>. Sorry, <laughs> we were man. Douglas for a while today without the Doug, and now he's back. I stand for freedom and liberty. You've been compromised, sir. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. Brett says, the William Tell air-to-air competition is back and happening this week. Were any of you guys involved in a competition like that? Let's go, Team Fat Amy. <laughs> I think it's been gone since like 2001 or 99 or something. We both, none of us are old enough to have experience there. Sorry, Brett. So, no. Garrett says, I'm trying to get an air contract through the Marines. Want to go active duty? Any tips for the selection board process? Spell check. And <laughs> uh, no, I so I went through this the process like 20 years ago, and it's pretty straightforward. It's uh, you know, the Marines are looking for the same thing. You got to pass the test. You got to pass the physical, and their their physical fitness test is significantly of higher standard than say the air force for sure. And even, uh, the Navy. So I would say yeah. just get in the best physical shape you can, because when you go to, and with the Marines, you got to go to OCS. And then after OCS, you got to go do TBS. So there's a lot more physical grunt stuff going on. You don't want to be, uh, you don't want to be worried about your physical fitness lacking because you're going to need to focus on other things. So I, that's what I would say, man, I was in great shape. I smoked you everything. Still are. You still are. <laughs> uh, the Marines wouldn't take me because I had uh, childhood asthma and they just, I couldn't get the waiver for it. Even though I, uh, yeah, I, I, I pretty much crushed the physical fitness test. Cause I knew that was going to be part, that was part of my uh, package for it. I don't have any asthma problems anymore, but they said no. Okay. That's all I got, man. Um, just for time, let's go to the Russian anti Doug. Do you have the Russian thing? Oh, you're already queued up for the, uh, Gazi. Oh, you do. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk good. about the Russians. The Russians are putting tires on airplanes. I haven't, I, I'm, I've got it queued. I haven't read it. Um, so they're putting tires and they've got this, this new, uh, technology. It's not technology. It's like a net. And, uh, so it's basically like the cages they put around tanks for RPGs. Is that the same idea? Yeah, stuff from the top. The the Ukraine, Here's the whole picture. air picture has been changed with these drones. There was a video we talked about a little bit where the, the Ukrainian drone took down a helicopter, like a kamikaze drone, which was just incredible. But now they're putting tires on it, and some of these don't even have engines on them. You know, they're just like, please don't kamikaze it's, it's just a, a spare bird. Um, but go up. There was a picture of the, the thing with the netting. Uh, I might be in the wrong article. Oh, I Hang thought on. I sent you one. Yeah, it was a different article. Yep, I can find it. Okay, that's fine. I'd, se I'd sent you one that, that's got like a net or whatever. But So I guess the, the reason I bring this up is because this is the first conflict that I know of where drones have been so widely used and it's an interesting point because i remember drone like they've got those little emp looking shotguns that can take them down but obviously that's narrow band but yeah there it there is, is. <clears throat> new anti-drone protection system is being tested in russia so i guess that is one way to to stop it but what about just wide scale wide scale you know electronic attack just using uh jamming i mean with that are the frequencies close enough that you'd be jamming yourself on comms? And is that why they're not doing it? I mean, that makes sense. I don't know. Dude. Uh, yeah, that's I, cheap. I, what's I, right there. So that's a very cheap technology. I mean, it's a net. Yeah. It's, so it's throwing trons out. I mean, you know, mm. well, taking so out a link so that they can't <laughs> prosecute yeah. an attack and talk to their drone. I mean, that's a, pretty cheap way to do it and a very russian thing to do dude i think it i i mean not to hijack the article but this goes back to what's the next gen why don't they just build some uh, anti-drone drones and just leave them on alert all the time like a phalanx <laughs> drone drone drones 
Also, drone. drones fighting drones, right? So, hey, it senses a drone coming, it immediately goes up and attacks it, right? I mean, this They're is called like hawks. Aren't they using birds to do that? Well, I've seen that where the bird takes down the drone, maybe, but falcons I mean, or whatever. But pretty quickly, probably the drones, uh, an, an anti drone drone would be uh, more effective. All I'm saying is, like, I mean, that's that's like the is this the future of warfare? You know, I mean, well, how much, I mean, you're going to spend $35 million on a fighter jet, put a $10 tent over the top of it to try to keep the $20 drone from blowing it up. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying is, <laughs> you know, a wide area noise jammer would be the same thing where you just, you cut the link. You know, if you knew what frequency it was on and you just, okay, I yeah. can't talk. But yeah, but then, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe comrade loses his Facebook feed, you know, while he's, I don't know, dude, that's what, that's what I'm that, That's my question is, is the reason they're not doing it because it would also, affect their own ability to do probably anything. yeah i mean because uh, because you're not you gonna know, know yeah as you know you're equally affected as the jammer <laughs> versus the jammy <laughs> correct <laughs> now nobody sees anything yeah now we're back to k bars um uh, but if you're worried about your fancy fighter because you know i mean the drones aren't operating in the 30s where these fighters would so once they're airborne they're not susceptible anymore it's just yeah it's interesting i mean like you said this is uh i mean obviously the u.s has been using drones for a while but not these kind of not these kamikaze right. drones that's the thing is you know we've we've used drones as airplanes just with dudes in connex containers not right dudes with you know little first person view goggles you know sitting in the back of a truck so okay well we got uh oh, hey we got voice messages but we also have a video message gonky what Ooh. hey wait did you wait did you watch it before we can't you know there's kids that watch this show <laughs> I, I just got <laughs> approval for that i just got approval so mom bet you're gonna love this you ready sure all right here we go hey mover yeah viper donkey can't handle the viper what'd you say kid donkey can't handle the viper oh. donkey can't handle this viper bro it's too bad for him. I love these kids. Ah, uh, with God. permission from. Uh, do you know them, Gunky? No, I'm assuming no, you do because they seem to know you pretty well. No, but you know what, man? I love it. Those yeah, kids are going to awesome. go far. They are. And I can't yeah, handle. Well, Gunky can't handle a Viper. <laughs> story. Mom All right. said I can handle the V8. <laughs> yeah. Uh, back to we've got voice messages, and then we'll move on to the mental health minute. Um, let me see if I can find it here. I know this is, we actually, I didn't think we'd have this much to talk about, but here's the first one. Hey, mover and gonky. Do you think artificial intelligence will affect backseaters, if at all? How come the AI guy sounds suspicious? Like AI? <laughs> Yorn or BC. Like, <laughs> how does this guy sound real? Max Eater has already been replaced, man. They Correct. replaced yeah, him in the morning. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. I mean, maybe F35 they'll give him a fighting chance one. to get more intelligence. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, Wombat. Well, Hate mail right. will go to trmatson.com.org.gov <laughs> and not to me. Uh, all right. So, our answer to that is. OBE overcome by events. <laughs> it's already, I mean, look at it. Look at like the C 130s, right? They used to have navs and now they rarely have navs unless they're doing like a hurricane mission or AFSOC. I learned that recently. Yeah. Um, you know, FEs on 727s to 737s or whatever. I mean, it, talk about it, replacing it, pilots. I mean, right. So it yeah. goes by the, the way of the dinosaur. Okay. This one's for you guys. It's a little low. So turn up the volume. Let's begin. Hey, Mover, Gunky, and Wombat, uh, ABH3 back here, uh, again, uh, CV-62, USS Independence. Uh, one of my favorite planes, I love the director of the F-18, and because they're just, they're so darn maneuverable, and uh, you could just spin those things on a dime. And since the pilot sits ahead of the nose gear, uh, occasionally, we, you know, there were certain spots where you had to hang the pilot over the side of the ship. And we didn't, we never did that stuff for kicks. It was always, you know, out of necessity. We took our jobs very seriously. Uh, the worst thing that aircraft director could ever do is to get somebody hurt. And that's, that's what we were not in the business of doing. But I was wondering if you ever got nervous in those situations and, and uh, ever refused. Because we, we, we certainly had one pilot that did refuse, but it was an A6. 
a little different situation, but I was just curious about his experiences about being taxied around the flight deck. Anyway, take care. Love your show. I, uh, I did. I'm nervous just hearing that and thinking about it again, frankly. <laughs> um, and I did stop once and the taxi director gave me a signal that had something to do with my head and another part of my body and told me to start taxiing <laughs> again. That's it. It looks it like this. one of these. A, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, man, that sucked. That was the worst. Have you ever had the nose gear hit the scupper? Yeah. I was going to say, yeah. dude. So, uh, that's the one like dude at night of course you can't see anything and they're and it's terrible because you're like looking 90 off mm -hmm. right so the airplane is pointed towards the ocean and you're looking like to the right because the director can't stand in front of you or he'd be freaking in the ocean right so you're looking like to the right or the left and he's telling you to go forward and you're like dude the lights are kind of getting over here now i'm i'm over the freaking water and uh yeah, man. One night I, you know, he's giving me the, on the break high gain and I'm coming around and dude, it hit the scupper and I about soiled myself. Cause dude, once you go over, you're out of the ejection envelope. And yeah, I was I think, a lot of people, I think a lot of people don't realize that. Like as soon as that nose gear goes, oh, boom, dude. you're done. You're no longer <laughs> in the ejection envelope. So, yeah. And I think I honestly think I'm 99% sure that dude got, got in a lot of trouble. Sure. Because right. well, do you remember the on that note? Do you remember watching the E2s get parked in the Hummer holes? Yeah. Backing up. Yeah. <laughs> so we had a guy doing that where you would back the plane into the Hummer hole in reverse, and he hopped on the brakes, and the nose came up. Well, the tail's <laughs> over the water, so like it was just dumb luck that it didn't have enough to keep going, and it just kind of boom. And I'm like, oh, dude. Are you out of the All ejection right. envelope there, too? <laughs> you are out of the ejection envelope the minute you select E2s. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I never, I, uh, I always trusted my director. Um, of course, th but it's that just night, that. that night when we, and I couldn't, like, I wasn't going to say anything, but the plane captain, I mean, it put a gash in the front tire. Yeah. It's like, dude, he's like, I got it. So I got reported, and I think, I, yeah. I think they pulled his qual, to be honest. Dude, it's that's oof. yeah mm. scary God. all right Put that well, on the list of things i'm glad i never have to do again yeah i feel like yeah i feel like i'm in therapy talking about a little it, clammy honest, you're like yeah like my, my like knees are shaking all. what the hell's going on here <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dude. knees weak mom spaghetti all right next mm -hmm. nice Hi, over. Hi, Gonky. Thank you for your time. Uh, I have a couple questions for you guys. Uh, I'm 19, and I want to fly more than anything. Uh, aviation has always fascinated me, and your channel has inspired me to pursue my dream of a career in the field. Uh, I've been looking into flying for the Colorado Air National Guard, but one thing has been on my mind. Uh, I'm worried about time, because due to some factors at home, uh, it'll likely take until I'm around 25 or 26 before I get my degree. So I have two questions. Uh, for one, do you know anything about Colorado's Air National Guard and maybe have some input on that path? And two, how much of a disadvantage does someone who's older have compared to someone who's younger when becoming a pilot, assuming both are within the age requirements? Thank you. Uh, I, I like to, if I could do a good Dave Ramsey impression, I'd tell him to do baby step number one. Uh, make sure all his debt is paid off. But uh, no, in all seriousness, you know, because I feel like we're a call-in show now. <laughs> uh, which I love, you know, I wish we could figure that out, but <clears throat> his first question, Buckley, it's an awesome unit. It is probably one of, if not the most difficult, uh, fighter squadron guard units to get hired by because it's so hot. I mean, dude, you're just outside of Denver. What you're are flying they flying? Vipers. Okay. Oh, it's F-16s. Yeah. Know. Block 30. Yeah. I don't know what they're, I think they're still block 30s, but. I don't know what the long-term plan is, whether it's F-35 or, you know, whatever, because obviously that's changing. But historically speaking, the Buckley Viper has been a very competitive unit to get into. So with that said, the only way to get hired, make sure you do everything that the board asks for, have competitive scores, and make them tell you no. So your second question, uh, 25, you're still young. I mean, I, I don't think I a 25-year-old do versus a 22-year-old, if you're – Stuff is good. GPA, AFOQT, TBAS, PCSM. You know, like you do all that well. Maybe you got some flight time. I think, and and they like you. 
I mean, that's the number one thing when it comes to guard units is they are hiring you with the expectation it's your entire career. That doesn't mean it has to happen that way, but that's what they're thinking. They're thinking, can I be stuck with this person for 10, 15, 20 years? And so when they evaluate you, yeah, the scores are great, but the scores, everybody's going to have high scores. I mean, that's who, that's who got called to the interview. The discriminator is going to be, are you a decent person that we like, or are you somebody that's just a douche as, you know, Deuce once said, don't be a douche. So Mm -hmm. that's going to be the difference is if you're out there, you know, trying to puff yourself up and try to distinguish yourself from everybody and you come off the wrong way, that's way worse than somebody that's humble and just is there to learn and just, you know, is yourself because they want to see your personality, not what you think they want you to be. Yeah, I, I didn't like I graduated college and it was two years. There's a two year gap uh, before I went in and granted it is in the Navy, but nobody ever asked me how old I was. Nope. Nobody cared. It's like mover said, I mean, once you go to OCS or whatever OTS, and then you go to flight school, I mean, you're, you, you know, you're all in the same program and pipeline and you're so immersed in what you're doing. No one cares. And like mover said, everyone's paying attention at that point on getting through the training and just, you know, learning how to be, uh, helpful, humble, you know, just a good dude. Uh, and yeah, I'm just talking about the interview, the interview process. When you go rush the unit and do the interview weekend and stuff, it's not going to be, you know, it's not, not this battle Royale. It's, yeah. you know, they're going to look at how you interact with the other people interviewing and how you interact with them because they don't want somebody that's fake, you know, cause they're watching, there's going to be spies or whatever. There's going to be people know that you're always being watched when you do these interviews. So there's going to be, the, there's always going to be that one guy or girl that is going to present this face to the board and then in private or what they think is private is going to act like, well, I'm the next fighter pilot. You know, I'm going to go fly, you know, F-16s and this is mine. You know, you're going to take it from me. It doesn't go over well. You know, they can tell. So that's where it, and, and your gonky's right too. Once you get the slot, the slot, the slot, once you get the spot or slot or spot slot, or Once slot. you get there to pilot training, whether it's UPT 2.5, 2.69, or whatever the next iteration is, help your bros. Don't be a douche. Cooperate to graduate. You know, don't ever try to be this competitive asshole because that's not going to work. It's not going to go well for you. It's not going to go well for you. The last one, we got a bunch of these. Evening, guys. Uh, BC here uh, again. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, could you it. explain the use of rotor in a jet a bit more? In DCS, I mainly use it on the runway or coming in for a landing. And I'm wondering if you use it mid-air as well during formation flying or refueling. Thanks again. Till next time, I'm sure. I wonder if this, if, if he is one of our former Folds of Honor, Fight for Honor guys, and he's trying to milk us for tips on how to win. <laughs> uh, I use yeah. the rudder for high AOA situations. You know, anytime I want to, influence the nose and i'm at a high angle of attack uh, i'm a rudder guy i used it in the viper used it in the hornet using the t38 you know that that to me otherwise your feet are on the floor i don't use it for landing i don't use it for I, anything else i use it for steering on the ground in the hornet well, there's that that's about it <laughs> and, and the gun air to ground right? oh cor- correct when i needed to do yes i did do that actually in actual combat i gave it the old like the old Vietnam pedal push. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Other than that, there's no real use for the rudder pedals and the uh, Hornet in my unprofessional opinion. Agreed. High AOA, sir. No, dude. The fly- well, yes. If you want just to move the nose left or right. Yeah. But dude, if I mean the stick, if you want to roll, throw the stick over there. Mm-hmm. It commands the performance. Mm-hmm. Pretty Just like an Airbus. Yeah, <laughs> sure does. Sure, sure, Mover, sure. Mover wouldn't understand seven threes and T thirty. <laughs> hey man, Viper Such and Hornet or we're both Such fly by the wire. Okay, so in the Vi- I'm curious now. The Viper, if you're doing like a high alpha thing, if you so in the Hornet, if you, you slam- used it for tuck under jinx, because it, it'll. I mean, when you're slow, it'll in the Hornet too, dude. It'll do it in the Hornet too. Uh, you know what? Okay, I take that back. Yeah, when. 
If you're going to do a really sharp redefinition, yeah, I would use stick and rudder. My redefinitions are the sharpest of the sharp. I'm sure they are. Oh, boy. Why well, win? Are we yeah. still on? <laughs> yeah. But so really and, like... I'm tall, and I'm still taller than you. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, so it's I, fish eye. It, it's because I don't have a beard. That's why you think I'm. Dude, the the ninety nine percent of the time, uh, your feet are flat on the floor. That's the that's okay. the fly by wire answer. All right, can we move on? Do we have any uh, super chats before? Oh my god, we do. Yeah, you do. Uh, and this is thank you, anonymous Sting Rider. But look thank at this, you. Darcy. Thank you. I lived in wow. NYC and saw the second plane hit. Wow. I volunteered at Ground Zero, taking care of wow. firefighters and canines. They became depressed because there weren't any bodies. Saw the pull plane from the wreckage, lost my friend working the rainbow room on the top floor. And wow. this is the problem Darcy, with sorry. conspiracy stuff is like there are real people that were yeah. affected. This is not just something from the internet. This is something <clears> that affected <throat> real people. And I posted this on the gram today. The canines, also heroes of the day because they were searching for bodies and a lot of them had the ill effects of all the, you know, the cancers and stuff like that. And they didn't live, dogs don't live long as it is. And that's really crappy. But now they had the health problems and some of them died, you know, and um, it, it, I, I'm sorry, you know, I'm yeah. sorry that that's horrific. I mean, that's. There's nothing that that can be said to to make that sound any better. Yeah. Um, and then Diane says the Freedom Five arrival has fixes. Yep. We will never forget September oh, 11th wow. in DC. Wow, so, I didn't know that. Yeah. Thanks, Diane. Thank you, Diane. Thanks for pointing that out. All right. Uh, and so we're on a serious note again, which is good because today, uh, Mental Health Minute, and this is going to go into kind of what Wombat shirt is. It took me a minute to figure out what what to talk about. Um, the unit I'm with, you know, we, we just had a, an incident. Um, and in general, when, I mean, anytime there's a loss of life or something like that, when somebody takes their life, especially you, you sit there and you try to figure it out, right? How did we get to this point? What happened? You know, did they ever try to reach out? We, we try to Monday morning quarterback, and my simple message to everyone here uh, that I've said as an addendum to a couple other mental health minutes, but don't make a temporary problem permanent. And by that, I mean anything that you're going through can be solved. Anything that you're going through does not have to be, you, you don't have to be alone and you're not alone. There are resources out in the community, uh, 988, you know, there's, uh, law enforcement agencies, you know, we're all trained in mental health first aid. And when you're going through something, don't fight it alone. There are veterans outreach programs, uh, Wombat, you know, you're going to talk about Wake for Warriors here in a second, but you know, Battle Scar Motorsports I've worked with, they use adrenaline therapy to try to help people through stuff. Luna and I are going through therapy canine training right now, comfort canine, uh, crisis response canine training. There are ways that we as humans try to band together and make things better for each other. And the only way we know that you need help is that you reach out. Or if we're good wingmen, we sit there and we pay attention. And when we see something that's different, we ask questions. And sometimes you're not going to answer, but that's okay. Just know that we're here and we're going to listen because being alone is the worst feeling in the world, especially when you're going through something, but you don't have to be, you don't have to fight alone because especially in the military and law enforcement and first aid, first responders, whatever, there are avenues and you have wingman teammates or whatever. And just in general, we don't fight alone. When we go out and we do tactics, we go out as two ship, four ship, uh, whatever, when we, you know, law enforcement, you know, uh, two is one, one is none. That mentality, I mean, not, it's not always possible, but it is something we try to. It's policy in a lot of places. So by the way we structure our training and our policies, techniques, tactics, procedures, we fight together. We fight as a unit. We fight 
as one, but it's one, you know, out of many, we're, we're one, you know, we're, we're all together. And that's kind of what we were talking about with nine 11, where we all kind of banded together. So if you're going through something, don't fight it alone. <clears throat> Try to bring somebody else into that fight to help you and, and don't feel like you're alone on an Island. And there are ways to do that with, uh, veteran outreach organizations, 988, et cetera. So Wombat, I'm going to turn this over to you because I know you've got a lot to say about it. <clears throat> uh, yeah, I agree. And it's, um, I mean, I, even something as simple as you think military pilot who's gone to the airlines, um, you know, I've been in my airline for almost a decade now and we've lost people. Um, that have decided to take their own life because they didn't make the transition well. And, you know, and the average American probably look at them and be like, they don't have any problems. So one of the things I do in teaching is I, <clears throat> excuse me, I spend some time with these new pilots. You know, if I know they have a military background to let them know that there's resources out there because not everybody uh, transitions out of the military well. But but with Wake for Warriors, that's something that I I can't, thank them enough for letting me get involved and in, in becoming a part of it. And it's something that, you know, when I first heard about, it, I'm like, Oh, this sounds like a pretty sweet boondoggle. Like I get to go and hang out on a really expensive wakeboard boat and, and, and they're going to show me how to wakeboard and wake surf. And I've never done that. And, and then it morphed into, well, I'm going to show other people how to do that. And then I realized that a lot of the people that I'm working with, don't have all their limbs or um, can't walk anymore because of injuries in war and military. Um, you know, they're, they're blind. I mean, it's, it's re the, the things that they overcome, put your whole life into perspective, like in a second, because you look at these warriors and they're out there just trying to be around their, their buddies, you know, they're just part of something again. And it's almost like you can give them a superpower of like, Hey, we're all back. Whatever, whatever you did, you know, whatever it is, right. You were a pilot, you were EOD, you were whatever, whatever your specialty was, you're back in that unit, just hanging out, being, uh, one of the guys or girls and, and learning a skill set. you know, kind of similar to what you're talking about mover with the, with the race cars and stuff like that and working on the cars and things like, I mean, you know, Dave deep is the founder, phenomenal guy, Marine veteran. I mean, just the most stand up guy I've ever met. And he put together this organization. And I mean, that's the whole premise is basically is getting people together for a day out in the water to get away from whatever it is that they're dealing with. And it, it was really cool. And it was selfish at first because I wanted to be able to show my, my son at the time and now both son and daughter, uh, the sacrifices these men and women have made for our country um, but then I started listening to their stories and it, it just, I mean, they're, they're amazing what they have been through and what they look at today as not even a factor. I mean, things that I think would debilitate me. I mean, I, I'd, I'd be on the ground if I had to deal with even a fraction of what they are, doesn't even phase them. Um, oh, you can't walk. No problem. We got a surfboard for that. And they're back there surfing. Can't see. Not a problem because you could feel the water. I mean, things like this that you're like, wow, like I, I don't even, you try to put yourself in that position and, and I just don't know what I would do. So it's been a real blessing, but where it really hit home is I happened to be in an event a few years ago and while I'm at the event, we're, we're on uh, one of the boats and, you know, it's a fun day. We're out there. We try to have a good time. You get to know everybody's story, right? What's their background? Where are they from? I mean, every one of these individuals is just a phenomenal American who, as mover, as you put, you know, was willing to write that check. And, and while none of them paid the full check price, every one of them, <laughs> something was cashed, right? And so we're out there and we're, I'll never forget it. We're about to go back out, you know, after lunch and I'm loading up the boat. I'm making sure it's fueled up. And I get a text from a buddy and he's like, did you, did you see? And I'm in your, your brain's not there. Right. I mean, you're thinking these guys, it's all about, and I'm like, see what bro, I'm, I'm out of the lake. And I shot a picture. Right. And he's like, so-and-so is the one that, that, that flew it in the T 45 on the low level. And it was a buddy of ours. And 
now immediately I go from this role of coach and driver and, you know, trying to build everybody up and I got nothing. Um, and I'm, I'm sitting there, I'm literally sitting on the edge of the dock. I've got my, my head in my hands. I just lost a friend and there's a whole backstory to the loss, which makes it even harder. And I hear this, I hear this noise and I start getting like something's touching my arm, but I'm so focused and it's, it's one of the warriors and he's blind and his service dog is coming up to me trying to get my attention, right. And sniffing my arm. And I was like, Oh, Hey, sorry. You know, I'm trying to, again, you put on that face, this dude's blind. And he goes, I could tell something's up the way my dog's acting. Something's up. He's like, I'm here. He sits down next to me. He's like, tell me what's going on. And to transform that, I'll never forget it. I mean, it, it was unbelievable that somebody in his position could immediately sense it, especially through the dog, and was there. It was that sense of camaraderie. And I haven't found it, and I've tried to find other, and I'm not knocking any other veterans organization, nothing like that. That is not my intent here. I have never found that with any of the other ones I've been involved in, where it's so personal. And it's, I mean, no kidding, when I tell you, if you donate one dollar, one dollar is going directly to one hundred percent of one dollar is going directly to these warriors, and it's. I think that is such a cool thing. Um, it's it's uh, it's sponsored by Nautique Boats. That company is fantastic. They donate one boat every year to this organization. I've seen the email where the the founder or the owner of Nautique says he doesn't care if he loses money every year to support these war. I mean. These ain't cheap boats, man. Like they can hold the candle to that Mustang GT, whatever that price. I mean, these are not, and oh, by the way, they're not cheap to run. And it's the money that funnels in to get these warriors from all over the country to these events to be around. It is just the most humbling thing in the world. And and it goes to what you're saying, Mover, is, is there's always somebody, but sometimes you can't find that somebody. It's hard, right? You're in a situation where you feel alone. You feel like there's nobody else out there for you. Nobody else could possibly understand what you happen to be going through at this moment. But in reality, everybody does. Like everybody's going through something. And I've said that before and there's varying levels, but here's the thing. It doesn't matter if you feel like yours is nothing and somebody else is more. It's a lot to you. And that's where I think the military, in my opinion, does a crap job of us when they're done with us. They don't care. They're done with you. I, I heard a song once where no kidding, they said it was like a, a voiceover and it was like, the best thing you can do after you get out is just die as quick as you can. Cause they don't care anymore, which is why we have to care. And that's why I think it's so important that we look out for each other and we send the text messages and the buddy checks and we make sure because nobody else is looking out for us. I mean, organizations like Wake for Work and the other ones are, but you've got to find them. And, and it's our job. You know, that's the mission now, right? I'm not going to go hop in a hornet. It's not going to happen, right? I'm retired. Well, it may get that bad, but hopefully it doesn't get that bad. My mission now is to, if I could just talk to one guy and I, and the story I'll tell you that'll, that'll also change me is um, I had a guy, Dave gave me a guy on my boat, right? He's a big guy. I mean, he's a big dude, Marine, very Marine-like, um, had a lot of uh, mental health issues from just the trauma of what he's been through. Um, not to get into the story too much, but Dave tells me, he goes, man, if he snaps on you, he goes, you treat him like a Marine because he knows, he knows how to be talked to like that, right? You treat him like a Marine, you're very pointed with him and he will come back. And I'm like, he goes, you think you can handle him? I go, I've never met the guy. I, <laughs> I'm like, maybe, you know, and we're out on the boat. It was the last day of the event. It's, it's Sunday morning. It's a half day. We're trying to get as many people in the water, right? Cause everybody's going to go fly home. And he stands up and I see his demeanor change. It just snaps. And I'm like, okay. You know, and I'm looking at this boat and I'm not trying to make light of these people, but there's like four people on the boat. There's me, there's this guy who trumps me in size. And I've got a guy who has no legs and a guy with one arm. And I was like, okay, this is not, I, I've got to figure out how to handle this, right? If he goes, if something snaps, and I know that was a possibility, and he looks at me, he goes, shut the boat off. I said, okay, shut the boat off. And he goes, he stares at me and he goes, this right here. 
and people like you are the reason I'm happy I didn't kill myself. And then he did a somersault into the water. And there was not a dry eye on that boat. Like I sat there and was just like, dude, you can't, you can't do that to me right now, man. Like, I'm, I'm trying to, but I mean, that's the, and that happens every time and you see it. And that's why to me, you know, the big organizations, the big things that are funded, good for them. I'm happy the work they're doing. A small organization like this, I'm behind it 100%. And I'm going down there in two days. And I'm going to spend four days with these guys, mm -hmm. working with the EOD Warriors, which is going to be very humbling because, as you can imagine, uh, there's a lot of visible scarring with that group in particular, right? Um, and it's something I'll – I just – I wish I could get everybody to see their mission and to see what they do and to affect that change because I guarantee you they'd have all the money they need to do this. And it's such a powerful thing. So. Cocky. Yeah, I won't, I'll just, you know, I, <laughs> so as a, um, as a Christian, I, I do read the Bible and there's a lot of good stuff in the Bible about not flying alone. I mean, there's, there's a lot in Proverbs you know, whoever walks with the wise will become wise, uh, <clears throat> but a companion of fools will suffer harm. So whatever you're doing, you know, like if you're, if you're suffering mentally, you know, seek out these groups like wake for warriors, because you want to be around people who are uh, feeding you the right, uh, you know, the right words, right. The right thoughts. Um or, you know, if you're working on a project at school, surround yourself with people who know what they're doing, right? Or for work. It's all about putting the right team together. And and flying fighters, you want to have, you know, if you're doing your four ship check ride and you can hand pick your guys, you're going to pick your, you know, the the people who are most capable, right? So you should do that in life. Um, so, I mean, Wombat gave a couple awesome stories about how, you know, when you're surrounded by the right people, amazing things can happen. And that's just, you know, you don't have to be, a, a, a you know, a, a veteran to experience that in life. So that's all I got mover. Yeah. Surround yourself with people that inspire and influence and make you better. Yep. Like you boys. <laughs> a little better. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> a little taller, a little better. taller than you. <laughs> I'm just going to throw that out there one more time. Uh, yeah. Douglas. No, that's that's great, Douglas. Yes, of course. We uh, hopefully his microphone's working. Or no, you guys nail it. Us. That's I mean, just like always, everything I thought of while you were talking, somebody else said it just a few minutes later. He really covered it. Um, positive social pressure. If somebody tells you not to get help or don't get help, don't listen to them. Go find somebody who will listen. There's no shame in getting help. Like it's it's so funny. I, I forgot where I even heard this, but. You wouldn't make fun of somebody if they hurt their knee and went to a doctor. You wouldn't make fun of somebody or think poorly of somebody if they, you know, got a concussion and went to a doctor. But yet, what's inside the brain, you know, so we go concussion, okay, where well, it's fine. But hey, some things aren't jiving mentally, and it's all of a sudden this big stigma. You know, we, we don't trust people. We don't, we, we think now there's something wrong with them. They're, they're less than, and I would argue that you are more than if you get help, you are stronger than, you know, you are stronger because you were vulnerable. You were stronger because you identified a threat and you attacked it because the worst are the ones that ignore it or they let it build up and then they do something irreversible, whether it's to themselves or to somebody else, to somebody they love. So I would just say there's no shame in, in, in getting help and you, it, it, help comes in many forms. It can be professional, you know, psychologist, psychiatrist, counselor, but it can also be the bros wake for warriors. You know, I mean, the fellowship, it can be a lot of different things. So don't think that there's only one way to fix it. And don't think that you have to do it one certain way because everybody's different. But the, the thing is, just make sure you get help. That's all. Talk to somebody. Okay. We got a couple uh, super chats and then I think it's time to wrap it up because it is past everybody's bedtime at this point. <laughs> 
even Batman. Uh, Gonky, this is from Eric, who plays the guitar. No, it's the drums. He plays the drums for $5. Gonky, what was your favorite trainer, T45 or 38? Uh, the T45 is my favorite trainer. Yes. The, uh, yes. the 38, I think, is a better looking jet, but uh, the T45 was very stable, except uh, when it was rolling down the runway. But once it was airborne, it was very stable. It had um, its own, uh, what do we call it, a GTS Wombat, the gas turbine starter. So it, you didn't need a huffer. You didn't need a huffer cart to start. Um, yeah, that's pretty much anything except for the T38. Yeah, point. yeah, the T45 that's... was 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 better. Uh, in my opinion, but I love flying the T thirty eight because it was uh, it's good looking and I'm vain. So, of course, no uh, Ethan, uh, thank you Thanks. for Luna there Bell, so she can be someone's light. I'm excited, <laughs> dude. Cool. Service excited. dogs are dope, man. Like yeah, they are yeah. so cool. I'm excited for, I'm... for what she. I am. I am little more than her handler slash bodyguard. <laughs> I'm just. She's the show. I'm just there to get her to and from and keep her safe. That's all her. Uh, and then just donated a wombat. Thank you. Plexi. Thank you for your continued service. It is. It is service. It's service what you're doing. So thanks. Plexi. Uh, and then the final one for the night. Janitor. Janitor is back. Boy. Gonky, you're going to have to do the. the oh, dude. The Snoopy. NPC stuff like the pop, 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 pop. Gang, gang. <laughs> Gang, gang. That's how you're going to just going to be a stream full of gonky doing random NPC movements. Uh, I digress. Best fictional fighter pilot, Mav, Snoopy. Doug Masters, or no, Matt, uh, Doug Masters, dude. I put Snoopy against. Yeah, I'm a big oh. Snoopy fan, other than when Doug Masters raced the dirt bike. Yeah. That was pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That was the if best. He didn't have the oil. Hey, he cut his oil line, right? Yeah. First of all, he flew scene. the Viper as a teenager. Has more kills than Maverick. <laughs> well, yeah, Dude. allegedly. But I, I think Snoopy's got them all beat. Dude, yeah. he, fly, he it, flies a doghouse, dude, and he's yeah. shooting down. He shot down the as, Red Baron flying a doghouse. As opposed yeah. to being in the doghouse as a married man. Totally different uh, conceptual correct. <laughs> Stuff that I wouldn't know about. Okay, well... <laughs> I think we've handled everything that we need to handle for the night. What Are else? These shows wanna... just getting longer. <laughs> That's not... what she said. That's what she said. Oh. Yeah. Well, if there weren't uh, a man named Wombat, who we I'm, love what dearly. Are you talking about? Well, we had the uh, dude. We had to pay pay tribute to September 11th, man. That I know a... that was. Yeah, that took some time. What's the? Have you guys decided for the viewers what the plan is going? Oh through? yeah, I do. We'll have to look at the analytics, but I think we're gonna have to move this to. When yeah. Wednesday, yeah, yeah, we'll see. We'll make an announcement. We will look at the data and figure out what's best. But Wombat, thanks for being on the thanks. show. Thanks, man. We always appreciate you. You are <clears throat> the light of our lives, uh, Douglas. As always, uh, we appreciate you, and we're glad you got your mic fixed. And Gonky is glad it's not him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I appreciate it. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I know that feeling. It was me last week. It was your turn. Uh, Gonky, thank you for your continued internet. Yeah. And, great, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Appreciate it. Uh, closing thoughts, gentlemen, around the room. Anything before I going once? Going twice? Yeah, should be awesome. good to one another. That's all. Have yeah. a great week. We will see you on the next one. Good night, everybody. See you guys. Good night. Bye. Yeah.